this is Shop All Day Fan Favorites. I'm Chassie Post. In Chassie's Closet, I'll share my favorite fashion pieces you'll want to add to your wardrobe. I'm Makon Jovu, and in Influencer Trends, I'm bringing you the experts who know it all. I'm Adriana Brock, and in Editor's Picks, I seek out new and notable products so you don't have to. Let's get shopping. I'm Chassie Post, and we're back with another episode of Shop All Day, and I'm sharing all the stuff we love and stuff shoppers love that we can't get enough of. These are all staples that are tried and true, from fashion favorites to even home essentials. And if you want to shop along with me, scan the QR code at the corner of your screen to check out everything in Chassie's Closet. So let's start with one of my absolute favorite trends, brights. Here I've got another fabulous way that you can do brights, and that is with, I think, probably one of the most versatile and flattering style staples there is, and that is the bodysuit. And I have to tell you guys, this is such a good one and really affordable. It's from a brand called Mango Pop, and this fabric is really soft. And I mean, look at all of these colors, the hot pink, red, is a new way to do brights. This is one of this season's It colors, and I actually have this bodysuit, and I just always feel so pulled together. You can wear it with really any bottom in your closet, from skirts to jeans. It works really well with all those new high-waisted styles we're seeing out there. So besides brights, you can also go with some of the modern neutrals. So burgundy, that's a color you're gonna see a lot of this season, which I like to call a new neutral. Also, they have beautiful navies and blacks if you want to go, you know, with an everyday piece. So next we have a bold and beautiful tracksuit. It's a two piece and I love a matching set. So matching sets are really big trends, especially in active wear. You can wear it together or you can break the pieces up and mix it in with the rest of your closet. And this is a really, really great two piece because you've got a fitted hoodie. I mean, how cute is that? along with tapered, fitted, almost jogger slash legging. Such a good deal too, for two pieces. And by the way, you see these hangers that we've got here? How fabulous are they? I mean, a great way to bring the trend into your closet. But they're not just for beauty. These are velvet hangers. And I've got to tell you, they're also one of my organizational secret weapons. It actually acts as a non-slip, so your clothes are going to stay on better. See how thin they are? When I switched out my hangers and my closet to these, I could fit so much more in my closet. Well, they come in sets of 25 or 50 or even 100 in lots of different colors. Okay, so now let's talk about another bright star, and that is the Hoka Clifton 9. So this is the running shoe of the season, and women are obsessed because they are just so incredibly comfortable. I mean, look at this. Look at that sole. The brand says they actually added three millimeters to the stack height. I mean, look how thick that sole is, right? It's like walking on sunshine. You're never gonna wanna take these off. And I love the fun colors. So that's our brights. And now let's talk about a category that is near and dear to my heart. And that is exuberant and cheeky styles, both for home and fashion, along with really vibrant prints. And I love the intersection when home trends intersect with fashion trends. And you guys are not going to believe these genius rugs. So these are from a brand called Ruggable. And there is so much to love about these rugs. I mean, starting with the fact that these were designed in collaboration with Jonathan Adler, who is one of the most famous interior designers, furniture designers in the world. So that's enough to make me love it. But get this, these are actually washable. Yes, you can wash these plush, gorgeous rugs in a standard washing machine. How cool is that? So it's a two-part system. So it comes with a rug cover and a rug mat. And whenever you're ready to wash them, you just throw these in the washing machine and then reattach it to the rug pad. I just think these are genius. Look at these graphic prints. And, you know, Jonathan Adler is really known for his exuberant and sort of modern retro vibe. So this is a great way to just give your house a lift. Also, this gorgeous graphic rug that's in our new Shop All Day set is also one of the Jonathan Adler ruggables. It's just so chic. 
So now let's talk about a little bit of cheeky style for your sofa. So these are needlepoint pillows from Furbish Studio. I mean, these crack me up. I think they're hysterical. I really live for a sense of humor in fashion and home, and these are definitely conversation pieces. And so check it out. You can choose from all sorts of sayings. I mean, too much of a good thing is wonderful. Well, isn't that the truth? <laughs> or I got it all together, but I forgot where I put it. And then they have some, you know, really almost sentimental options like good night moon. I mean, how sweet would this be in a child's room? And I mean, look, the needlepoint, it's so kooky preppy, right? And I think you guys are gonna have a blast exploring Furbish Studios. So now let's talk about an eyewear collection from the queen of maximalism, I think one of the most inspiring style icons ever, and that is Iris Apfel. And so this is Iris's collaboration with the optical brand Zinni. Iris is known for her statement glasses, and turns out statement glasses are a huge trend right now. So I think these designs are so exquisite and unique. There's so many different patterns and frame shapes. And what I think is really cool is that you can choose any of the frames and make them in readers, or you can make them in prescription lenses, or you can even make them sunglasses. One thing that I also think is really cool about Zinni is they'll personalize them for you just for a few dollars. They'll put them right there, and I think that's also really nice. I think one of my favorite things about this collection is that you can channel a little bit of Iris's adventurous spirit. She encourages us to have fun with style, and that's what it's all about, right? Okay, so our last category is cool classics. And this season we saw a renewed focus on pieces that were wearable, you know, that had staying power, elevated takes on, you know, style staples. And I think you guys are really gonna love what we found here. It doesn't get more classic than the cap toe ballet flat. And what's not to love about a ballet flat, right? But you add the cap toe and that's instant elevation. It really just raises it up a level. And I just feel like with this shoe, it adds instant polish to whatever you're wearing. And these are from Steve Madden. They're a really great example of the trend. And you can choose between two colorways, the tan and the black, which I'm telling you, you're going to see absolutely everywhere this season. And this is, the perfect neutral. It will go with every single thing in your closet. But I'm also really excited about this new colorway, denim cacto ballet flats. Denim is also a big trend in shoes this season. So look out for those as well. And I've got to say, these are also a little bit of an investment, but I say they are worth it. These are incredibly well made. Like we said, they're never going out of style, and the brand says they're also made out of real leather. Next up, how about a low-tech makeover for your high-tech smartwatch? I mean, look how cool this watch band is, right? Such an easy way to jazz up your smartwatch. So according to the brand, these are real leather, and you can see here, these are double wraps. So I think it looks just kind of like a cool leather bracelet. And they're so easy to switch out. You just slide out your old watch band, slide in these. They come in lots of different colors, and I love this stitching detail. I mean, this is a high-end look without the high-end price tag. And last but not least, is there anything more classic than a crew neck cashmere sweater? I don't think so. So this is the Mongolian cashmere crew neck sweater. It is from the brand Quince. And guess what? It is $50. I mean, I didn't even know it was possible to get a, you know, a high quality cashmere sweater for $50, but I guess it is, right? So these are really, really soft. They're so lightweight. You can wear them all four seasons. I gotta say, these are cool, classic, and really, really cozy. If you'd like to add any of these pieces to your closet, you know what to do. Just scan the QR code to shop it all. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns commission on purchases made through our links at today.com.
Up next, the hottest social media trends in beauty and shop today's editor picks for home and tech. So don't go away. everyone, I'm Shop All Day contributor Makon Jovu, and today we are talking fan favorites when it comes to beauty. My friend and expert from Shop Today, Kamari Stewart, is here with us to share the pics that are taking over social media. And as a reminder, if you see something you like, just scan the QR code on the corner of your screen. I'm Mako. Hi, Kamari. Kamari, let's start with the first yes. product. This is the body wash. Tell me all about yes. it. Yes, Sonatarium has been so popular all over social media. Mm -hmm. This is their salicylic acid body wash. And salicylic acid, according to some dermatologists we've spoken to, say it's really good for body acne. Oh. So it's very gentle. You can use it on your face. You can use it on your body. And it's a beautiful multi-use product, perfect for dealing with body acne, keratosis pilaris, and things like that for smooth, exfoliated skin. Wonderful. And and I see yeah. also here that it's fragrance free. It is. I can't wait to try it. So now yes. that we've talked about the body wash, we need to yes. moisturize our body. Yes. This is from a brand that we know and we love. Yes. What is this stick? Okay, so we all know Vaseline. It is a classic. We yeah. had the giant tubs growing up, but now you can take it on the go. Oh. You got this stick, you can hydrate your body anywhere. And for me, I love it because I have eczema on my hands. So I could just apply it really quickly, give myself some quick little hydration and then my hands are not sticky. You take it on the go, you can use it on your arms. I love that I'm picturing myself at yes. my office, my elbows are a little yeah. ashy. I don't know about you, my skin gets super dry in the winter. Yes. So I love having little products like this to take on the go. Yes, and you can just throw it in your bag and it's really easy. And it also leaves you with a little bit of shine too. So mm -hmm. you've got hydration and you've got a little glow to you at the end. Is it too soon to start thinking about holidays? I think this Never. would make like a great stocking stuff. Right? Never too soon. Okay, I'm Never obsessed. too soon. And yes. I like that it has no scent. So yes. I'm a fan of that. All right. So yes. Let's move on to the next fan favorite. We're talking about lip stains. Is it a lip gloss? What makes yes. this one so exceptional? Well, it's a lip stick, and Revlon is a classic mm -hmm. brand, classic brand. This is my own lipstick that I've used. I tried this for our first ever Shop Today Beauty Awards. Tell me. Okay, earlier this year. It's amazing. It's the shade Ingenue. Mm -hmm. I've never worn a red lip before. You've never worn never. a red lip? Why? You I just... was nervous, okay. you know? I never worn a red lip. It seemed a little too bold, like I wasn't ready, but I tried 
tried this, I fell in love. And it swipes on so easily, and it lasts all day. Can I try it out? Absolutely, yeah. Does it come on matte, swatch. or is it shiny? For me, I feel like it went on with just enough of a glow, Ooh. but it's matte enough to last the entire day. Okay. It'll last through talking, through eating, through drinking. I love it, and okay. that's that's my favorite shade, so. Oh, yeah. now do you wear a liner with it, or can you just apply it? Because I think with red lip, you don't want it like to get all over your face, right? Right, yeah. right. I just apply, and it does leave your lips looking really full. It is perfect for beginners. It's so pretty. Again, yeah. I love winter reds. They just look yes. great with any outfit. Like, if I'm wearing athleisure, and yes. I put on a little pop of like red, it looks so beautiful. Yes. I like this. Okay, it's so nice. now we have that. I'm gonna put that to the side for yes. a second. If I'm doing a full, or maybe even a casual mm -hmm. sort of makeup look, I want to use lashes or I want to use a little bit of mascara. What do you have for us in that department? Okay, if you want to use lashes, but maybe you haven't tried it before, yep. or you're not certain about how to do it, mm -hmm. this kit is my favorite. <laughs> I love it. My best friend's obsessed with it. My makeup artist loves it. And what these are, instead of an entire lash strip, they're just individual lashes. I gotta tell you, I okay. am so afraid of using individuals. I don't know how to use them. I prefer the strips. Why do you prefer the individuals? I feel like for me, these are just less intimidating than really? having to line up an entire strip along my eye. Yeah, they're super easy to take out if you just take these tweezers. Okay. And you can pull out, they have three different lengths, short, medium, and long. Oh, I see it right here. Yes. So you start with the short and then go Yes, so you can long? start with the short on the inner corner and then work your way outward to the long as long as you'd like. So for me right now, I have short on my inner corners and then I have mediums on the middle to outer corners. Gorgeous. They're so easy. Wonderful. Uh, speaking of mascara, you also yes. brought uh, another fan favorite. I did. And this gives you volume, right? Yes, okay. volume. So this ColourPop mascara is super popular on TikTok. It has over 9 million views on its hashtag. People love it because they say it gives them this extension-like feel without having to actually commit to extensions. Right. <laughs> it just takes a few swipes. Okay, I gotta pick it up so and see affordable. it here. We're actually supposed to switch out our mascara more often than we know, so I yes. like that this is one that we can try out. Does it come in different colors or is it just the black? It comes in black and brown, so really good staple colors you can wear all year long. Oh. If you want, yeah. The wand is small too, so that makes it easier to kind of cut, yes. catch the lashes. We both have falsies. Yes. Can you use it on your falsies and on your natural lash too? Yes, you can. So that's the great thing about both of these, so that you can put your mascara of choice over your falsies to kind of bl help blend them out a little bit more, or you can just wear them on your own. This is so yeah. cute. I love the brown for like a day off yes. where I'm not really going into the office, but I just want a little extra glam. So yes. I like that it comes in different colors. All right, simple. so what do we have here? Are yes. we talking about the spray? We are. Why should we yes. apply a spray when we're doing our makeup routine? Yes. Well, you want your makeup to last, right? You spend all this time putting your look together, you know, putting on your foundation, your blushes, your eyeshadows. You want it to last longer than when you leave the house, right? Yeah. So a setting spray will help your makeup sit right on your face and not move. Okay. Okay. So for me, I have oily skin. Okay. And it is very hard to find a setting spray that actually keeps my makeup in place. And this is the one that does it for me. Can I try it out? So Absolutely. I have dry skin. Does this work on all skin it types does. or is it just for uh, oily skin? It works for all skin types. Ooh. I love it. And to show you how Ooh. much I love it, this okay. is my own that's <laughs> almost empty. I use it all the time. I use it in extreme temperatures. Oh. Okay, I use it on vacation, in Aruba, super hot, mm -hmm. but my makeup stayed in place. Absolutely love it, and it's so affordable. Can you use it before you apply your makeup, or do you only use it after to set your makeup in place? Yeah, so this is actually a primer, a set, and a refresh spray. Ooh. So you can use it before you put your makeup on, you can use it to set your makeup once you're done. Mm -hmm. And then if you have drier skin and throughout the day, you wanna, you know, give yourself a little refresh, give yourself a little glow, you can pump a few spritzes of this and it'll get you going. This, it smells, it has a, like a light little scent to it as yeah. well. I just sprayed it again to set my makeup and yeah. also as a refresh, so I like yes. that we can do all those different things with it. Yes. Love this one as well. Amazing. All right, we also have something for the eyes as well, we if you suffer from dry eyes, which by the way, yes. a lot of people probably do staring at their screens mm -hmm. for hours and hours on time. So what does this product yeah. do? So this is one of my favorite products ever and we're gonna open this together. Let's do it. Because these are self-heating eye masks. Okay. okay, so we're gonna open these up, and the brand says what they do is they stimulate the natural oil glands in your eyelids. Uh -huh. It's stimulating those oil glands and helping you, you know, if you're staring at a screen all day. For me, I wear contacts. 
contacts and staring at a screen all day. Right. By the end of the day, my eyes are so tired and so dry, and they have these little ear loops. Okay. You just rip them open, and then you can put them over your ear. You only need to wear it for about 15 minutes. 15 right? minutes, okay, 15 so at minutes. the end of the day. End of the day, no contacts in if you wear them mm -hmm. or anything like that. But I like to put them on to relax before sleep. Oh. You know, before bed. You just okay. pop them over your ears, put them on, 15 minutes, and if you feel they're starting to heat up, Cover. it's so nice. Um, and they're perfect for travel because they're disposable. You can take them on the go. If you're on a plane, you know, our skin gets really dry in planes, the same goes for your eyes. You just pop them on and you're good to go. It's great for eye strain. Oh, there we go. They got them on here. It's warm, but not hot. So it's like the perfect temperature. Like, I'm serious, Wait, so these are great. So nice. <laughs> these are fantastic. Oh. I live by these. These are so clever. And the fact that they come in the individual wraps is yes. also really great. So you can kind of give them out to your friends too. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And each box comes with about 10. So you've got 10. plenty to go around. Awesome. Kamari, thank you for these. I see thank why you. they are fan yes. favorites. I'm a fan of a couple of them here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through the QR codes or links on our website. Next up, home and tech favorites from the Shop Today team. Stay with us. I'm Adriana Brock, and this is Editor's Picks. Today's episode is all about fan favorites, and I've got some of our all-time all-stars for your home that our team is obsessed with. And you know what to do. Scan the QR code on the corner of your screen with your smartphone to shop along with me. Okay, an easy way to upgrade your home is with lighting. So lighting can make the mood, it can set the tone whether you have guests over or you're just enjoying a nice night in. I really love the GE smart bulbs. I have these all over my lamps at home, whether it's my nightstand or my floor lamps in the living room. This is so genius because you don't need a light switch. Everything's controlled from your phone. So you just hook up the app to the GE light bulb and it's as easy as turning it on and off. And the best part is you can control the brightness level from your phone as well. So if you have guests over, you're having a dinner party, you keep it nice and bright. 
you're at home just chilling out, reading a book, watching TV, you could set the dimness a little bit lower. Another thing I really love to do with these bulbs is connect it to my Google Home or my Alexa so I can use voice commands to turn them on and off. Another cool way to upgrade your lighting is with these awesome wireless globes. And I love them. They're so lightweight. They're so easy to connect. And this is a great way to create lighting, whether it's in a kid's room, you can use them indoor and outdoor too. I kind of love setting them when you're having people over as a centerpiece, it could be really fun. And again, like I said, using the app, all you have to do is control the lighting. You can change the color to anything you want, literally. Look at all these colors. The options are endless. You can go green, you can do, I'm gonna choose a pink color right now. See, so easy to use. And then you can also control the brightness level. And according to the brand, one charge lasts six hours. I don't know about you guys, but I love scents in my home. So I want every time someone walks in to have a signature fresh scent that they smell when they come into my home. It sets the ambiance, it's welcoming, it's refreshing. It's a smart diffuser and it's genius because all you have to do is plug it in and again, control everything in our home with our phones. You download an app and it's so easy to control. You can load up to two of the scents into one. So you can set schedules and reminders and a ton of different settings on there, including how intense you want the scent to be. Another thing I really love about this is that I don't have to use candles because I have a small kid at home, I also have a dog, and I don't want open flames at my house. So this thing is really great. Um, another really cool thing that the brand does is they team up with like a lot of high-end fragrances. So you can get fragrances from brands like Homesick, Anthropology, and they're really cool because a little bit goes a long way. According to the brand, each one lasts for about 100 hours depending on average use. And like I said, you can load two of these on here. So what I like to do is I'll have one in the foyer in the entryway. And then when I wanna plug in a different scent, I'll take that one to the other room and get that one going. And it's so easy to use with the app. And moving on to home entertainment. So if you are looking to upgrade your TV, whether it's a new TV or an old one, the Roku 4K is amazing. It's the Express Stick and it's a really small but mighty gadget. I love it because this little thing not only streams really fast with Wi-Fi connection, but if you have a 4K TV or an HDR TV, it's gonna give you that same resolution on your streaming as you get on your regular television. So you're not gonna compromise picture quality over this little guy. Another really cool thing about the Roku, when you're unlocking so much streaming content, we're talking thousands of channels and thousands of movies and TV shows, you can use the voice remote to really navigate and get what you want. So there's no more just sitting around and scrolling. Whether you wanna watch reality TV or an action movie, you just say it into the voice remote and it'll help guide you to what you wanna watch. Another small but mighty gadget that we really love at shop today is this Bluetooth transmitter. So this is really good if you have older devices in the home that may not have Bluetooth capabilities. This instantly acts as a receiver and a transmitter. So we have our producer's record player right here, which doesn't have Bluetooth capabilities. And the built-in audio here, these speakers aren't the loudest. So she uses this little guy to connect it to a sound bar or a wireless speaker so she can listen to her records and get the audio that she really, really wants. Another great way to use this is to plug this into a TV that you have at home and you can connect your wireless earbuds or your headphones. I really like using this when I'm in my bedroom and my husband might be sleeping, but I wanna watch my TV. So I'll go ahead and plug in my Bose earphones or my earbuds into it and I can watch TV without disrupting my partner. Another fun hack that you can do with this is bring it on an airplane. So if you wanna connect those earbuds or those noise canceling earphones that you spend so much money on and then you can't use them on an airplane entertainment center, bring it with you and you'll have instant Bluetooth connection. Okay, and last but certainly not least, I am so obsessed with this one. It is the Bird Buddy Smart Feeder. And you're probably thinking like a bird feeder, this is not your average bird feeder. It uses AI technology to give you a live stream of all your visitors. It sends you photos and fun facts about them. What I really like too is that it gives you instant alerts too. So if you get an instant alert, you can live stream it. And if you miss them, of course, it'll send you a nice little postcard straight to your phone. And the Bird Buddy also comes with a lifetime membership to their app, which has endless facts about all your favorite birds. It also comes in two colors to fit your style. How cute are those birds? 
It's been so much fun showing you our favorites in fashion, beauty, and home. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Tune in next week for another episode of Shop All Day. Thanks for watching. Sponsored by Walmart. What up, y'all? Welcome to the Today All Day Kitchen. Pasta is a staple for so many weeknight meals. It's easy to make, pretty hard to screw up, and oh so satisfying. I'm making pillowy soft ricotta gnocchi with peas and parm in a buttery sauce. And I'm cooking up a creamy chicken stroganoff with baby bella mushrooms. And I'm whipping up a spicy vegan pasta alla vodka. So start boiling some water. It's time to use that noodle and let's get cooking. You can shop the ingredients featured here from our sponsor Walmart by scanning the QR code. Today earns a commission from purchases made through links on today.com. I have to admit, pasta is one of my go-to comfort foods, so I am very excited to share this recipe with you. The first thing we wanna do is take our gorgeous ricotta and actually lay it out in a thin layer on paper towels. Since the ricotta is the base of our dough, we need to remove some of that moisture so it ends up really nice and light and fluffy rather than dense. We are going to let this sit for about 12 to 15 minutes just to make sure that the paper towel absorbs that moisture, but lucky for me, I made one before. And here is how it ends up looking when it is done. Stunning. Okay, so now let's just make our dough. We have our ricotta right here. Plop it right on in. So we have two large eggs here. I'm going to crack them right into our bowl. One cup of finely grated Parmigiana Reggiano cheese and some kosher salt, just to awaken the flavor. Before we add in our flour, we are going to delicately mix it all together. So it creates a really light, fluffy consistency. So now that this is looking really beautifully mixed together, that is when we know it is time to start adding in our flour. It's really important here to add your flour in a quarter cup at a time because we don't wanna to develop too much gluten, but we also wanna make sure that our ricotta stays nice and fluffy. I'm just going to delicately mix it until there are no more big bits of flour, and we'll just keep mixing our final quarter cup. There we go, looking good. Now it is time to shape our gnocchi. And then we're going to take our dough mixture, kind of form it into a bit of a, it feels so good. It feels like a baby's bottom. Can we use that in the final cut? <laughs> it's what it feels like, okay. And now we're going to dust the top with a bit more flour. And this is my favorite tool whenever I'm making pasta, also whenever I'm cooking to easily pick things up. It is called a bench scraper. It's typically used for decorating cakes, making sure you have a nice smooth line of frosting around your cake, but it does such a good job of picking things up and it also does a great job of cutting things really evenly. And we are going to cut this into quarters. And the next thing we're going to do is we are going to roll this out into a beautiful snake that is about one inch thick. It feels so nice, <laughs> so soft. I like to cut off the end first, just because this end, it doesn't look as nice. And then what I'll do is I will just keep cutting little one inch pieces of pasta. And look at that. They look like little pillows, don't they? Look at how beautiful this is looking. And what we're going to do is we'll take that same bench scraper that we have, 
lift them up, and transfer them to a parchment lined baking sheet. All right, and we're just going to repeat this with our remaining pieces of gnocchi dough. Looking good. Before we cook our gnocchi, I wanna get started on the star of our sauce. This is a lemon butter sauce, so we are going to be using the zest and juice of two gorgeous lemons. And I'm going to show you my favorite way to prepare lemon zest. So we're just going to take the peeler and run it along lengthwise on this lemon, pulling the zest off of the lemon. So I'm just gonna remove any of this extra pith. And the reason why I'm removing this pith is because the pith is a bit bitter and we don't want any of that bitterness. And as you can see, I've stacked up all of this lemon into cute little, almost soldiers, if you will. Take your knife and rock it back and forth along that peel. It smells amazing. And you can see how beautiful these strips are. And then what we'll do is we'll take these shreds and turn them, and then we will run our knife across again to mince that lemon. And it took me a while to master these skills, let me tell you. It really all comes down to practicing over and over and over again. It's really repetition here. And now I'm just gonna take my knife and run through this a few more times. It's smelling absolutely amazing. Look at that zest though, I mean, it's like freshly fallen snow. <laughs> okay, let's clean up, get our water a boiling, and finish up this gnocchi. Our water is boiling, it is time to cook our gnocchi and you gotta pay attention because this all happens pretty quickly. But I promise you, you have all of the tools to absolutely crush it. The first thing we wanna do is salt our water. I'm taking kosher salt. Okay, this is boiling beautifully and we can use our fingers to plop these in because let me tell you, they are light and pillowy and Dropping them all in at once is going to cause them to smush together. We want these to cook until they float to the top, okay? They basically tell us, they're like, hey, what's up? And then to save some time, we are actually going to take our frozen peas and we're gonna pop those in as well. So this pasta water is liquid gold. I call it unicorn juice whenever I'm cooking because all of the starch in the water itself is actually going to help bind our sauce together. And we're going to start adding in our cubed unsalted butter a couple tablespoons at a time. You really want it to be cold butter because our goal here is to really emulsify everything. Take a whisk. Start whisking everything up. The gnocchi's starting to float. And now we are ready to bring our sauce and our gnocchi together. I've actually turned off the heat. If it is too hot, it may cause your sauce to break. So just make sure you turn that heat off. Next up, we're going to add in half of our lemon zest. How good does this look? Okay, next up, we are going to slowly add in our parm. Keep on mixing it back and forth so that it melts in a nice, even fashion. It is smelling so good. And as you can see, it is really looking super glossy. Mm, and it is tasting delish. So add in the lemon juice a little bit at a time. Again, we want to emulsify this in. We don't want to freak out the gorgeous sauce that we just worked so hard to build. It is coating all of those beautiful pillows of gnocchi. And now it is time to plate it up. 
Oh my gosh, you guys. How gorgeous does this look? Okay, a little extra parm, some freshly ground black pepper, and then I'll take a little bit of fresh mint, a little drizzle of olive oil, gives the pasta gorgeous sheen, and there you go, homemade ricotta gnocchi in a lemon butter sauce with peas and mint. I'm so excited to try this. It is melting in my mouth. The parm adds the perfect amount of nuttiness and saltiness. I don't have any other words to say except I know you're gonna love this. Mm. So good. When you hear stroganoff, you're probably thinking beef, but this creamy comfort food pairs incredibly well with chicken. But the best part about this dish is that it all comes together in one pot. Less mess is always a win in my kitchen. All right, so first what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our dry rub. I like to use a little bit of smoked paprika. You can use the regular paprika too, but I think smoke flavors just bring a lot more body to your recipes. And then a little bit of dry thyme, and then a little bit of garlic powder. Give that a good swish. All right, now let's move on to our chicken breast. Now I've just got some lean, skinless chicken breast, and I'm not sure about you, but I like to cut mine up into smaller pieces. The reason why, it's gonna cook a lot faster. All right, y'all, let's add this to our bowl. Get your hands all up in there. Don't be scared to get your hands dirty. I'm gonna just rinse off the cutting board and wash our knife so we can prep the mushrooms. Okay, now I'm gonna be using some Baby Bella mushrooms. I think they're super delicious. I'm just gonna slice this into small slices just like this. So I've got a ton of mushrooms here and you're probably thinking, yo, okay, that's not gonna fit in my pan. Don't worry, mushrooms are kinda like spinach. Once you start cooking them and add some heat to them, they shrivel up really, really small. So they will fit, I promise you that. Our mushrooms are cut up. I'm gonna set these aside. And now we're gonna fire up our pan and get cooking. All right, we're gonna place this on a medium high heat. Okay, with it nice and hot, in goes the oil. This is a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of heart health, a little sprinkle of that. Then I like to grab some tongs and in goes our chicken. Ooh, I love that sizzle sound. We want a nice sear, a nice color on the chicken. There we go. You're gonna wanna cook this for about four to five minutes on each side, and then look at this. Oh, just lift it up, and look at that beautiful color on the chicken. Move it around a little bit. If you're feeling brave, you can go ahead and toss it, but again, this is a no-mess recipe, so <laughs> the least amount of mess you can make in your kitchen. 
the better. This chicken is just about ready. I'm gonna move my mushrooms a little bit closer. And then I'm gonna use my tongs. I'm gonna start taking out the pieces of chicken. Oh my God, look at that. It's just looking so good. Kev, you did that. If you're not your best cheerleader in the kitchen, I don't know what you're doing. You gotta just give yourself a pat on the back. It smells so good, it looks so good. Exactly what we want. I'm gonna set this over here. Now, I'm gonna add in the mushrooms now. Now, there's a lot of chicken flavor here already, so we want that. Oh, we've got a good sear here. I'm just gonna wilt them just a little bit by using a little bit of our chicken broth. Just a little bit, just to create some steam. And also, this is gonna help to deglaze the bottom of our skillet as well. I'm gonna get my salt bay on, give me a little pinch of salt, just a little bit, mm -mm. boom. And the cool thing about mushrooms is that as they're shrinking up too, you know they're just soaking up all this flavor. So people that say, I don't like mushrooms, I'm like, yo man, mushrooms are like flavor bombs. They make your mouth water, it's that umami factor. More love to mushrooms this year. Now we're gonna try to create a little bit of a thick gravy here. We're gonna add in a little bit of flour. I'm gonna give this a quick toss first. Then we're gonna add in about a cup of our chicken broth. And what you'll see here, you're gonna still deglaze, but you see now the chicken broth is really cloudy. And that's because it's turning into that gravy that we want. I'm also gonna add in a little bit of Dijon. And just keep stirring, keep stirring. And this is looking beautiful. All right, now let's begin to bring everything together. In goes our chicken broth. Reserve some, then grab yourself the egg noodles, sprinkle those on, and then pour in the rest of that broth. And the noodles are going to absorb all of this liquid that's now like a gravy. So we're gonna bring it to a light simmer and you can see right here inside, got the little light simmer going. That's just about right. And then we're gonna cover and cook this for about seven minutes. Oh my gosh, I stirred these once. Oof, they are looking good. Always check your noodles. And if you're thinking like, Kev, it's looking a little watery, what am I gonna do? Don't worry, I got you. Remember that it's gonna thicken up as it cools, but also it's gonna thicken up because we're going to add in our Greek yogurt now. Greek yogurt is really high in protein and it's really, really, really thick. And look at this. It looks like I added cheese, but I have not at all. And this is our swap for sour cream. Last bit of work, we're gonna add in our chicken. Well, you can't be here to smell it, but I'm just gonna describe it. We need that smell-o-vision from Willy Wonka. So I'm gonna plate it right here and finish it off with some fresh parsley. If you like some other chicken? Try this chicken stroganoff. You're seeing it first here today and then today all day kitchen. I'm just gonna hit it with some fresh black pepper. Ooh, look at that. I don't know about y'all, but I'm excited about eating. Here we go. Get a little bit of mushroom, a little bit of noodle, and then some of this succulent, lean chicken breast. Oh my God. Mm. Yeah, this will make you get happy in church. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> I guarantee your friends and family are going to love this dish.
up on Staten Island, so I can't even tell you how many pasta dishes I've eaten over the years. One of my absolute favorites is penne a la vodka. So today, I'm giving that beautiful pink sauce a vegan makeover. And I'm putting a little twist on that penne too. Let's get started with the crunchy breadcrumb topping. So first, I'm gonna get a small skillet over medium low heat, and we're gonna add in a little bit of olive oil. So for our breadcrumbs, we're gonna use panko breadcrumbs. I love using panko because it's extra crunchy and it's plain, so we can add anything to it and really manipulate those flavors. And the way we're gonna do that is by adding some red chili flakes because we want this spicy and a little bit of nutmeg to really round out those flavors and add that earthy component. A little bit of kosher salt and a little bit of freshly ground black pepper. And just we're gonna cook this over medium low until it gets a nice golden brown color. So we're essentially just toasting it in the pan. This usually takes about five minutes to get nice and golden and crispy. This is a test. If it loosely moves in the pan, that means it's ready. So to start off any good sauce, you have to start off with your aromatics. We're gonna start with one medium white onion and some garlic. So we just wanna get a small dice on this. And next up, garlic. We're using about four cloves of garlic. I just like to give them a light crush to help me with the chopping process. Another great way to prep all of this is actually just blitzing it up in a food processor. Just putting it on chop and giving it a few pulses and it'll all be roughly chopped. So you wanna start off with a really large pan and get it over medium high heat. To this, we're gonna add a layer of olive oil and we're also gonna add in one tablespoon of vegan butter. Traditional vodka sauce is so indulgent and creamy, so we're gonna add a few vegan options to help bring that creaminess to the sauce. So now that our oil is hot and the butter is sizzling, let's go in with our onion and garlic. You also wanna get some salt in at this point because that's gonna help the onions sweat out all of their moisture. Now, I said this was spicy vodka sauce, so now come in our spicy elements. We're gonna add some red chili flakes, but let's not stop there. We're gonna add in one of my favorite chili peppers, Calabrian chilies. And I just so happen to be wearing chili earrings to celebrate the occasion. So we wanna cook these for about five minutes until the onions are sweating and almost translucent. So now let's go in with our tomato paste. The tomato paste is gonna add basically a really concentrated tomato flavor. So it's gonna feel like we've been cooking this sauce all day, but really, we haven't been. So get this incorporated into the onions. So, the star of the show, some vodka. No, this is not a shot for me. This is for the pasta, maybe that'll be later. So once we add the vodka in, all of that alcohol is gonna evaporate, so you don't have to worry about any alcohol actually being in there, but the flavor of the vodka will become concentrated, which is what adds that unique flavor to vodka sauce, which I happen to love. We're gonna go in with some crushed tomatoes. We're gonna go in with a little sugar. Now, don't hate on this. This is really gonna help balance the flavors again. There's a lot of acidity in the tomatoes, and then we also have a lot of spice, so the sugar is gonna help round everything out. As well as some dried oregano. So I actually like to take this and rub it in between my fingers to get the oils in the oregano activated. We want our spicy vodka sauce to be smooth and silky, and in order to achieve that, we're gonna use an immersion blender. This looks great, look how vibrant that is. It really is starting to look like vodka sauce. So now we're gonna add a few dairy elements to our sauce. We're gonna add a little bit of vegan creamer, as well as some vegan cream cheese. So you wanna make sure to incorporate all of that in. 
and you can see the color is this beautiful light orange vodka sauce color. We're gonna add in one whole sprig of fresh basil. Right in, and we're gonna let that simmer with the sauce. Okay, let's check in our pasta water. Oh, it's boiling. Before we do anything, we always wanna salt our pasta water. And now for our pasta. I just wanna show you guys how fun this is. So this is called a colony Pompeii. I think colony means column and Pompeii is obviously a city in Italy. But to me, it's just a beautiful large fusilli and it looks delicious to eat. So we're gonna get these in. This pasta is so big, it takes about 10 or 12 minutes to cook. So I'm gonna start cleaning up and get everything out of the way and get ready to plate. Our pasta looks ready, so let's add it into our vodka sauce. Beautiful. This is so fun. Look at these swirls. And this is liquid gold. This is our starchy, salted water. So we're actually gonna add a little ladle into our pasta to make it even silkier. want to make sure to gently combine this with the sauce because we don't want to break up our beautiful giant swirls of pasta. Look how fun this looks. I'm so excited to eat it, but we can't forget about our spicy, crunchy breadcrumb topping. So it's now completely cooled, so we can just use our hands to garnish it as if we were garnishing it with Parmesan. And then if we want to be extra fancy, we can add a little sprig of fresh basil. Okay, I've waited long enough, so we're now ready to dig in. I'm so excited to eat this shape. I feel like the proper way is from the bottom. Wow, I think Staten Island would be proud. This is so delicious and so fun. Look at that. Chef's kiss. This is delicious. There is new evidence this morning that the so-called Mediterranean diet, it can sharply reduce your chances of developing dementia even if you have a genetic risk for it. NBC News medical contributor, Dr. Natalie Azar here, is here to tell us about the new study and that could have us eating healthier. What encouraging news. Yeah. I mean, what, anything can fight back against dementia and Alzheimer's, but this is a diet that a lot of people have been on or are on. Absolutely, Hoda. It is definitely another vote for the Mediterranean diet. So this study looked at over 60,000 individuals who were middle-aged um, and followed them for about nine years. Ooh. And there were close to 900 cases of dementia. 
people who followed strictly a Mediterranean diet had almost a quarter lower chance of developing dementia. And as you said in the lead, they actually took into account genetic risk, and that didn't even make a difference, which is really, really encouraging because you think that certain things are predetermined, mm -hmm. but this is the kind of thing that we can all actually implement in our lives. Can you remind everybody what the Mediterranean yeah. Yeah. diet is and, and then why it might have affected something to do with your brain health? Right. So, so the Mediterranean diet, think plant-based. Okay, Ooh. so we're talking about fresh fruits and vegetables, whole grains, seeds, legumes, things like that, fish, seafood, olive oil. You want to limit or eat in moderation mm -hmm. red meat, eggs, poultry, cheese, yogurt, and sweets. Why is it? Well, you know, some people have said maybe it's not a direct effect on the brain, but maybe because it's reducing inflammation, it's, mm -hmm. it wow. has antioxidants, that it's helping your heart health, that helps the blood vessels in the brain. Mm -hmm. um, we don't know exactly why, but nonetheless, this is very compelling. It was such a large study. Besides the, the change of diet, are there yes. ways that, that folks might be able to reduce the likelihood that they develop Alzheimer's or, or dementia? Absolutely. And all of these things, again, are lifestyle changes, getting adequate sleep, controlling your blood mm -hmm. pressure, controlling cholesterol your blood glucose, staying physically and mentally active. These are all things that can help with cognitive decline and hopefully stave off the yeah. risk of dementia. Okay, okay. Thanks. thank Thanks. you, Dr. Thanks. Natalie. Diet can play a big part in our ability to stay sharp and may even reduce your risk of cognitive diseases such as Alzheimer's. Here's a look at how the foods we choose can impact our ability to focus and function. We have all felt that dreaded mid-afternoon slump and it turns out there's a reason for it. What's happening in the brain when you feel this slump is it doesn't have the fuel it needs. The fuel that you're providing all have an impact on whether or not your brain will be as sharp as it humanly can be. That fuel comes in the form of food. 20% of the calories you consume go toward brain function, which needs specific nutrients to focus and function fully throughout the day. What goes into our bodies is almost certainly going to reflect itself in our brains. We're in an era now where we can get all kinds of processed, packaged foods that aren't necessarily what our bodies have evolved to deal with. To keep our health maximal, what you want to do is eat naturally. Research shows that people who eat a primarily plant-based diet are more likely to experience brain-boosting benefits both short-term and long-term. The clearest evidence of benefit and risk reduction revolves around the MIND diet and the Mediterranean diet, which have both been studied quite well and show good effects. MIND diet stands for Mediterranean Intervention for Neurodegenerative Delay. It's broken down into a list of healthy foods like leafy greens, beans, nuts, whole grains, fatty fish, having about two servings of berries every day actually help to reduce cognitive decline by about two and a half years. Of course, there are foods to limit too. Things you want to avoid are going to be anything that is high in sugar, refined carbohydrates, so white pasta, white bread, obviously any sugary drinks. You want to limit the amount of overall saturated fat that's coming into your diet, typically coming from meat, animal products such as high fat dairy, things of that nature. 75% of the brain is made up of water, so what you drink is important too. Many times when people say they feel drained of energy or they're hungry, they're just dehydrated. Water is really critical as a drink. Coffee is great. Any kind of tea will have benefit. In the short term, there's no doubt that caffeine improves processing speed and helps with attention. A lifetime habit of caffeinated beverages may be protective against brain disorders later. Psychologically, people see the effects of a diet shift pretty rapidly. They start feeling better, they start having more energy, and this cascades into all sorts of other things in life, like how happy you are and how well you're sleeping at night. So when people shift their diets so that they're eating well, it really matters. A brain-healthy diet may also help prevent cognitive diseases, like Alzheimer's, which is the sixth leading cause of death in the United States. 64-year-old Debbie Morden has a history of Alzheimer's in her family. My father had Alzheimer's for 12 years. His brother had Alzheimer's and three of his first cousins had Alzheimer's. Debbie has tested positive for an Alzheimer's gene and is taking a proactive approach. She's seen an Alzheimer's prevention specialist who recommended the MIND diet. That gene means I have a higher risk of Alzheimer's. I went on basically a vegan diet except for fish. 
I've cut out dairy and I'm eating more grains and more legumes, increasing olive oil and a daily intake of berries and also lowered alcohol to four ounces of red wine a couple times a week. After eight months, Debbie has significantly lowered her cholesterol and hopes her new diet will ward off cognitive deterioration. I watched my father for 12 years decline. The whole thing with, with Alzheimer's, it starts developing 10 to 20 years before you see signs of it. So you want to start preventing it as early as possible. I'm making the changes because I want to live a healthy life as long as I can and enjoy it. Whether you're 85 or you're eight, now is the time to start building that base. Diet can prevent certain things. And I never want to have a conversation with my patient where they've developed something and we didn't have the years to work into that prevention factor. It's something you have to commit to and do it for the long haul. We always say we want a brain span to match your lifespan. For more on the Mind Diet, head to hodaandjenna.com. with more is the author of This Is Your Brain on Food, Dr. Uma Naidu. Welcome, Dr. Naidu. Hi, Dr. Naidu. Uh, thank you so much, Jenna and Hoda. I'm a big fan, so oh. I'm excited to be here. That thank is so you. sweet. Okay, you know what? I, I sort of like know in theory how this works because I know when I eat terrible food the night before, I wake up the next day and I feel even worse. And my goal in eating that terrible food is to soothe myself mm -hmm. at night. For eating. So there's a real direct correlation between your gut and your brain. Exactly. You know, Hoda, you'd be surprised to know that some people call the gut the second brain. Mm. And here's why. They have a profound influence on one another, and they actually have the same origin in the body. So I think that's something useful for people to know when they, you know, when they're making a decision about what to eat. Mm. Okay. So w we wake up in the morning. Sometimes we have those days where we're feeling sluggish, yeah. we're not motivated. Yeah. And I've noticed that if I eat certain things... I yeah. feel worse. Yes. So, but what can we eat to make us start our day on the right path? Mm -hmm. That's a great question because I think we're all feeling a little bit th of that these days. I like to add spices. So, you know, you could add things like black pepper, cinnamon, and ginger, which are actually ingredients of my grandmother's chai tea recipe, but mm. they're great to kind of liven things up. Also things like saffron, which can be added. It's a great aromatic. It can be added to a risotto or adding, you know, things like rosemary and sage to a roasted roasted veggies can help liven things up for you and make you because what you're trying to do is feel more alert and um, you know feel feel more energy as well what would you say is it like the best breakfast if you want to start the day mm -hmm. right so I actually love uh, either something like a chia pudding or, you know, chia pudding, a little bit of coconut milk and topped with um, lots of different nuts. My favorite go-to nuts that are great brain foods are either hazelnuts or macadamia. And, you know, a simple thing like that that you can even make ahead is mm -hmm. a great way to, you know, you can plan for the week, uh, set out your little chia puddings and you have them ready to go. So we have been talking all morning about how people are more anxious than ever. Mm -hmm. What are some foods that that can actually help soothe anxiety. Mm -hmm. 
So, you know, when I think the uncertainty is what's so difficult for people, and this is where fiber is your friend. Mm. Um, so adding in fiber-rich foods that you get from, you know, vegetables, um, certain berries, uh, beans, nuts, seeds, and legumes, those help to sort of even out your, um, your blood sugar levels because they break down more slowly in the body. But it's also important to know things to avoid when you're feeling anxious. Yes. And what I like to remind people about here is that there's sometimes hidden sources of caffeine that we don't think about, um, such as, you know, sodas that have caffeine or other beverages, and then things like, um, you know, chocolate could have caffeine. And mm -hmm. um, some over-the-counter headache pills as well. Mm -hmm. So you want, you want to try to avoid these if you're feeling super anxious and you're feeling stressed. What if you're feeling just down? You don't know what it is. I don't know whether it's a funk or whatever. And usually in those yeah. moments, that's when you go for the comfort yes, food that like really the take you down the rabbit hole. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, it's a long rabbit hole. So so I, I like to suggest things that people can do right now. You know, adding prebiotic or probiotic rich foods, which are fermented foods, um, into your diet even right now can really help you and start to make a difference. Um, but, you know, I also think the same thing with depression, Hold and Jenna, I think that also knowing things to avoid becomes super important. And here's where I want people to know that there are actually a lot of studies that show that sugar is associated quite profoundly with levels of depression. Mm -hmm. And um, things like, you know, nitrates, which you find in processed meats, um, are also uh, linked to depression. So maybe cut back on those foods and add back, you know, prebiotic rich foods and probiotics, which are usually fermented foods, like, like kefir, unsweetened, and things like that. Like what, what were the pre or probiotic foods that are we can try? So prebiotic foods are like garlic, leeks, onions, um, you know, it's different types of vegetables. And these feed the good bugs in your gut and help and really help you stave off symptoms. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then probiotics are usually usually a supplement, but fermented foods um, are rich in these active cultures and things like miso, kimchi, unsweetened kefir, sauerkraut, um, kombucha mm. are all good options for you. Oh, okay. So I think a lot of people are having a hard time sleeping. Mm -hmm. Some I, I used to drink chamomile tea before mm -hmm. bed. Let's talk about things that are good for sleep and then mm -hmm. the benefits of chamomile tea. Absolutely. So chamomile, you know, the great aroma really helps us to de-stress and it's well known. I also have another tip about de-stressing, which is turmeric with black pepper, a pinch of black pepper. And you can add it to a soup or smoothie. And why turmeric with a pinch of black pepper? It hits the high notes on so many conditions in mental wellness. So that's, that's one of my go-tos. Great. Okay. Dr. Naidu, thank you so thank much. You. We appreciate you. Okay, are you ready to feel your best yet? If the answer is yes, we've got some power foods to tell you about that can improve your overall health and wellness. We're talking about immunity, sleep, brain health, all the things max. So Lugavere is a health and science journalist. His recent book is called Genius, Genius Kitchen. Kitchen. First of all, I love the fact that the things we need are right in front of us, right in the fridge, right in the supermarket that can actually help us physically. We're always taking pills if we have yeah. a problem. We're not working the front food end. Food is medicine. It's such yeah. a cool way to think yeah. about life, right? It is. I mean, yeah, food is so powerful. I mean, with, with every bite you take, you are essentially either feeding or fighting disease. And so I'm here to pre present some of what I think are the most powerful foods available to most people in your average okay. supermarket. Okay. Mushrooms, yeah. they're all over the place. Yeah, so mushrooms can actually be used to balance immune function, to foster better immunity. Wow. So there are a few mechanisms here which are, are still being elucidated, yeah. but essentially some mushrooms create vitamin D, which can tamper down an overactive immune response. Mm -hmm. But I think most interestingly, mushrooms like lion's mushrooms. mane, sure. which are typically pretty available, they actually create antioxidants that we produce in our own bodies, one of which is called glutathione. It's considered oh. the mother of all antioxidants. It helps to detox. Mm and reduce What's, oxidative which stress. Which one's lion's mane? This one? So, that's oyster, right? Yeah. So oh, we have. Is that lion mane? That's not a lion's mane. No, yeah. lion's mane actually has like a. It has the consistency of crab, fresh crab. It's oh. really, really good. By the way, tasty. whatever this one is. It's really good. I want to keep eating it. Here's a tip. Actually, you don't want to rinse mushrooms. You just want to. You just oh, want eat to them a little dirty. dirty. Cook them. Yeah, eat them a little dirty with some nice uh, okay. butter or olive okay, oil. Okay, move to on kiwi. to kiwi. So here we've got kiwi. Kiwi can be used to promote better digestion and good sleep. So we're seeing clinical trials Ooh, now wow. that two kiwi a day. Yeah, actually, in a head to head match against psyllium husk. <laughs> Kiwi has been shown to, to help uh, reduce constipation, which a lot oh. of people suffer from, and also <laughs> yeah, can, can help fight constipation and also improve sleep, too, before Should bed. Should you skin on or off? Yeah, I'm so glad you asked. Eat the kiwi with the skin, what? because skin the skin on. contains Skin's more good. vitamin E. Uh, I've never yeah. eaten a kiwi bite. with skin. Yeah, it's good. People think that it's weird, but it's, it's actually really tart and delicious. Mm -hmm. You like it's it? It's not bad. I don't know that I could force my kids to eat. Wow, tart. 
It's good, hard. right? But it balances out the okay. sweet. But what if, what if the kid done eat it? Is it okay, the middle stuff? Yeah, the middle is great, okay. too. The middle is great, okay. too. Okay, let's get to these fruits. Okay, so here we have brain foods. So these foods are loaded with compounds Lava called plum. flavonoids, which are plant pigments that are usually in the outer skin. We've got apples, we've got citrus, we've got plums. Berries are a great mm. source of flavonoids. They've been shown to boost BDNF in the blood, which is a, a miracle grow protein that actually helps to support healthy neurons. BDNF, it's BDNF. called? BDNF, okay. yeah. We produce it in our muscles when we work out. One of the reasons why exercise so great, but this has actually been shown to boost it. So you never know, an apple a day might keep the neurologist doesn't, away. Doesn't matter, red or green, whatever? No, it doesn't matter. Okay. High right. flavonoid foods. Okay, right. let's there go to go. strawberries mm. and almonds. Yeah, so these are anti-aging foods. Strawberries are rich in a compound called fisetin, which is known as a senolytic. So we have in our bodies, all of us, especially as we age, uh, cells called senescent cells okay. that secrete pro-inflammatory compounds that can make, make our skin look uh, more aged. And so these actually fight aging by helping to kill off those <laughs> zombie cells. Yeah. You can actually no, thank you, zombie skulls. Mm. And actually, this is actually also very interesting. Strawberry leaves are rich in caffeic acid, which is a very powerful antioxidant. So eat the leaf? So when you yeah, eat you a strawberry, you eat the whole yeah, thing? Yeah, I do. And almonds are loaded with magnesium, which 50% of Americans don't consume adequate uh, amounts of. And magnesium can help fight DNA damage. Wow, so, this is again, crazy. Yeah. Okay, hit us with the last one. Okay, so here we've got dark chocolate and coffee. So this, I mean, people are probably at home rejoicing. If I am. Loaded with compounds called flavanols. When you buy dark chocolate, you want to make sure that the cacao percentage is high. And it's not, it hasn't been processed with alkali, also known as Dutch processed, which greatly degrades oh. the health quality of the uh, chocolate. And then from, a, uh, from the standpoint of coffee, coffee's long been associated with better cardiovascular yeah. health, reduced risk for Alzheimer's disease and other neurodegenerative conditions. And we now know that, there, that caffeine actually can help promote better lipids in the blood, so better, like, uh, healthier cholesterol levels. Wow. Welcome back. It is Super Food Friday. Today, nutritionist Joy Bauer is back, and this week she has not one, not two, but three surprising superfoods that could help boost brain power and enhance your memory. This is exciting. First of all, the role that food plays in terms of our, our memory, in terms of our brain health and all that. Which is a great question. So there's a lot of studies that we have now that are showing that there are certain compounds within foods and beverages okay. that can help to slow cognitive decline and also boost memory, boost brain power, it's all good. And I'm going to feature three today. Let's start with the blueberries. Blueberries 
as you can tell from their color, they are packed with antioxidants. And in fact, that they rank number one when the USDA did like a huge rally of all of the fruits and vegetables. Number one. Number okay. one. Mm. And they get their blue color from something called anthocyanins. That's the name of the antioxidant. And we know that that helps to boost brain power. There's actually even a Harvard study that shows if w these women, they ate one cup a week. That's not a lot. Mm -hmm. And they had significant increase in their smarts. They did all sorts of tests and stuff. How easy is that, oh, right? Yeah. You could throw them in pancake batter and muffin yeah. batter on your oatmeal, but this is my favorite way. Classic peanut butter and jelly sandwich, swap out the sugary jam oh, and just put whole blueberries. And this is so fun for your kids. Huh. No, they stick because of the peanut butter. Mm -hmm. And then um, for kids, you can make a tic-tac-toe board. Oh, this is like the ultimate pre-exam morning breakfast. I love that. That's a great idea. So cocoa powder is the next superfood. Cocoa powder is like the king of dark chocolate because it's 100% dark chocolate. Mm -hmm. And they contain something called flavanols. It's another type of antioxidant that we we know can keep your blood vessels healthy and elastic, which means a healthy heart. And a healthy heart equals a healthy brain, because when your blood vessels are open and elastic and healthy and happy, all of the nutrition goes right up to your brain. You get more oxygen, you get more nutrients. So what I'm going to show you that you can do is add, it's not sweet, cocoa powder is not sweet and indulgent like mm. dark chocolate, but you could do a lot of things with it. Okay. If you take some and you mix it into, this is just a vanilla low-fat yogurt. Yogurt. Mm -hmm. Two ingredients, and you've Perhaps now some. made a brain boosting chocolate pudding. So, my kids oh. will just think they're having chocolate pudding, just and really. Tell them it's chocolate pudding. Really? Oh, wow. Mm. Isn't that good? That's Two like ingredients. Now this Doesn't get easier than that. This is the most right. surprising superfood to me. Work. Coffee? Coffee. Every single week, we are hearing more and more studies showing that yeah. the benefits in terms of brain health for coffee. We used to think it was just the caffeine. We know yeah. that caffeine keeps you alert, it wakes you up, mm -hmm. but it's a combination of the caffeine and the antioxidants within coffee uh. that could help boost brain power. And that's really good news because a lot of people are caffeine sensitive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that means decaf gives you these health perks as well. And all you need is about a half a cup to four cups a day to reap these benefits. So you're making a, a breakfast co uh, cookie. I developed, I'm calling this <laughs> my so exclusive. I'm so excited about these cookies. <laughs> these are brain boosting breakfast coffee cookies. This is exclusive to okay. the Today Show. Just to the Today yeah. Show. I'm going to put right. them on Instagram and I'm going to put them on our website. So for the dry ingredients, it's um, whole grain flour. We have cocoa powder, some mm. cinnamon, and we have a little bit of uh, baking powder. And some salt. And some salt, kosher salt. Now I'm adding instant coffee, oh. boom, right into the batter. We're gonna so mix. I thought that was connected to this, but no, this is just instant coffee. This is just instant okay. coffee. You could also use finely powdered regular coffee mm -hmm. as well, but it's easy to buy the instant. So you mix okay. this up. Yeah. What's so the wet ingredients are a lot of usual breakfast foods. I have Greek yogurt, I have eggs, I have mashed banana, and a little bit of honey. You mix oh, these two okay. things in, then you fold in your blueberries because oh, all three superfoods are in here. That's Go amazing. taste a cookie. See what you think. Right. Wait, wait, wait. And then a little bit of chocolate more. chips. Each cookie is only 80 oh, wow. calories and comes packed with protein and fiber. So you could have three with a cup of coffee for oh, breakfast. Wow. Fantastic. Wait, Joy, three. thank three you cookies. so much. Three cookies for breakfast. For these recipes, go to today.com health, and we'll be right back. Cheers. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs>
we're going to tell you about five foods to add to your diet to help improve memory, energy levels, and sleep. Dr. Taz Batia is an integrative wellness physician and host of the Superwoman Wellness Podcast. But this is for everybody. Dr. Yes. Taz, good morning. Good morning. So you're saying before we get to it that, that if you start incorporating these into your diet, you'll see results relatively quickly? The beauty about kind of getting your diet right is usually within three weeks, oh. you can see a change. And it can be as quiet as you have more sleep and you have more energy to like you're on and you're focused and ready to go. Wow. What is about these foods that we're going to look at here? What is about these particular foods and, and other items that give the brain that boost? Well, what, why we have picked these foods is because we call them superfoods. They just have a ton of nutrients for every serving. Okay. So they're su they're efficient, right? So if you're trying to get these nutrients in, this is an efficient way to do it to keep your brain and your energy superpowered. All right. Our first super ingredient is yes. magnesium. Where do we find that? So magnesium, I always call the miracle micronutrient. It helps us with sleep. It helps calm us down. It helps balance serotonin. Try that. It's Believe so it or not, dark chocolate is going to be oh, one of our production. best sources. An ounce of it has about 64 milligrams of magnesium okay. in it. Legumes are great. They come in at about 70 milligrams. A tablespoon of flax, which you see right here, mm -hmm. at about 40. Avocado also has magnesium, but less than the dark chocolate. So you, so you have this recipe, these little balls. What are in those then? So it's a lot of cacao, which has a lot of the magnesium mm -hmm. and the antioxidants in it, almond butter for the healthy fats, flax seeds, mm -hmm. mix it up together, super easy, has a little bit of oat too. A little dark chocolate in there. A little dark there. chocolate in there. So it's, it's yummy, yummy right? Yeah. Yeah. And not too much calories no, either, Not too many it? calories. So no. we have a chocolate Let's craving, you go for Let's it. Let's talk collagen here, because yes. collagen, you say, is, it's actually naturally occurring in our bodies. We all have it. We've all got collagen. It's naturally occurring. We know it for skin and health, hair and overall health, but it actually helps support the gut lining, helping us to absorb the nutrients. So so many people are eating healthy, but they're not absorbing what they're eating. Collagen comes in and helps us with that, helps the brain, helps energy. It's in a lot of naturally occurring proteins. So we've got salmon here, for example, and chicken. You know, these are things that are a great way to get salmon in. This looks like chicken this stock. Is, How would you use it? This is bone broth. Bone so broth. Some people oh. will just drink bone broth and get a great Roker, source Roker of collagen. Yeah, try a swig. Roker does Wash that. that. And then if, you're, if you're vegetarian, you can get some collagen from your vegetables as well. It's just that we get a lot more through our proteins and through our bone broth. Okay. I, I, these are cruciferous. Those are can cruciferous. you only get the collagen from cruciferous? Not vegetables? necessarily. Okay. No, no, you can get it from other vegetables as well. It's just not as dense. All right, this is a new one on me. Choline. What is that? Why is it good? So choline, I feel like, doesn't get enough press, and I'm so glad we're talking about it today. So choline actually is a nutrient that comes in and coats all our nerves. So it helps us with learning, Never with memory, that. with hmm. focus. And we really want to get choline in our diet. So choline is naturally found in eggs. Eggs are one of the best sources. But you've got to eat the egg yolk. Okay. The yolk has the choline, has about 140 milligrams. We've got mushrooms and burgers here. Which one do you think has more choline? Mushrooms. Mushrooms. You guys win. Good okay. job. So mushrooms actually have more choline. How than many a burger. eggs would you have to eat, or mushrooms? Like, what's a serving to get enough choline so any given day? So just this is the beauty of eggs. One full egg, including oh. the yolk, will okay. do it. You need a cup of mushrooms. You actually need two burgers to get the choline. <laughs> <laughs> so. Ooh, I mushroom love choline. Mushroom. Yeah. Mushrooms and eggs, I guess. There yeah. we go. Do a yes. mushroom burger. This is something I've never heard of. Oh, ghee. I've heard of this. I've it's like butter or something. Ghee is uh, it's like butter. That's a great way to think about it. It's clarified butter. It's been used in Eastern systems of medicine for a really long time. And it's been used as a healing fat. Mm. And the reason is, is because ghee actually has less lactose, less casein. So if you've got somebody that's dairy intolerant, yeah. can't tolerate that stuff, they can usually tolerate ghee very well. But the secret superfood ingredient here is MCT, or medium chain triglycerides. That helps the brain. It helps the gut. It balances is everything living down here in the mm. gut and that is really the powerhouse the source of our energy so if we're not getting some of these healthy fats in that's one of the biggest reasons I see brain and energy start to go down. how do you get ghee in your diet I'm not looking to yes take a big old no bite we don't want you we, and we don't want you, you to put do it that on toast you can put it on toast literally all you need is about a quarter to a oh, half wait, of a sure teaspoon that. a tiny little bit a tiny little teaspoon you don't need okay. a lot and you can spread it on something you, it also has a higher smoke point so you can bake and fry with it oh, as well okay. so you can use it as butter. Exactly. This is Shop All Day fan favorites. I'm Chassie Post. In Chassie's Closet, I'll share my favorite fashion pieces you'll want to add to your wardrobe. 
I'm Makon Jovu, and in Influencer Trends, I'm bringing you the experts who know it all. I'm Adriana Brock, and in Editor's Picks, I seek out new and notable products so you don't have to. Let's get shopping. I'm Chassie Post, and we're back with another episode of Shop All Day, and I'm sharing all the stuff we love and stuff shoppers love that we can't get enough of. These are all staples that are tried and true, from fashion favorites to even home essentials. And if you want to shop along with me, scan the QR code at the corner of your screen to check out everything in Chassie's closet. So let's start with one of my absolute favorite trends, brights. Here I've got another fabulous way that you can do brights, and that is with, I think, probably one of the most versatile and flattering style staples there is, and that is the bodysuit. And I have to tell you guys, this is such a good one and really affordable. It's from a brand called Mango Pop, and this fabric is really soft. And I mean, look at all of these colors, the hot pink, red, is a new way to do brights. This is one of this season's it colors, and I actually have this bodysuit, and I just always feel so pulled together. You can wear it with really any bottom in your closet, from skirts to jeans. It works really well with all those new high-waisted styles we're seeing out there. So besides brights, you can also go with some of the modern neutrals. So burgundy, that's a color you're gonna see a lot of this season, which I like to call a new neutral. Also, they have beautiful navies and blacks if you want to go, you know, with an everyday piece. So next we have a bold and beautiful tracksuit. It's a two piece and I love a matching set. So matching sets are really big trends, especially in active wear. You can wear it together or you can break the pieces up and mix it in with the rest of your closet. And this is a really, really great two piece because you've got a fitted hoodie. I mean, how cute is that? along with tapered, fitted, almost jogger slash legging. Such a good deal too, for two pieces. And by the way, you see these hangers that we've got here? How fabulous are they? I mean, a great way to bring the trend into your closet. But they're not just for beauty. These are velvet hangers. And I've got to tell you, they're also one of my organizational secret weapons. It actually acts as a non-slip, so your clothes are going to stay on better. See how thin they are? When I switched out my hangers and my closet to these, I could fit so much more in my closet. Well, they come in sets of 25 or 50 or even 100 in lots of different colors. Okay, so now let's talk about another bright star, and that is the Hoka Clifton 9. So this is the running shoe of the season, and women are obsessed because they are just so incredibly comfortable. I mean, look at this. Look at that sole. The brand says they actually added three millimeters to the stack height. I mean, look how thick that sole is, right? It's like walking on sunshine. You're never gonna wanna take these off. And I love the fun colors. So that's our brights. And now let's talk about a category that is near and dear to my heart. And that is exuberant and cheeky styles, both for home and fashion, along with really vibrant prints. And I love the intersection when home trends intersect with fashion trends. And you guys are not going to believe these genius rugs. So these are from a brand called Ruggable. And there is so much to love about these rugs. I mean, starting with the fact that these were designed in collaboration with Jonathan Adler, who is one of the most famous interior designers, furniture designers in the world. So that's enough to make me love it. But get this, these are actually washable. Yes, you can wash these plush, gorgeous rugs in a standard washing machine. How cool is that? So it's a two-part system. So it comes with a rug cover and a rug mat. And whenever you're ready to wash them, you just throw these in the washing machine and then reattach it to the rug pad. I just think these are genius. Look at these graphic prints. And, you know, Jonathan Adler is really known for his exuberant and sort of modern retro vibe. So this is a great way to just give your house a lift. Also, this gorgeous graphic rug that's in our new Shop All Day set is also one of the Jonathan Adler ruggables. It's just so chic. So now let's talk about a little bit of cheeky style for your sofa. So these 
are needlepoint pillows from Furbish Studio. I mean, these crack me up. I think they're hysterical. I really live for a sense of humor in fashion and home, and these are definitely conversation pieces. And so check it out. You can choose from all sorts of sayings. I mean, too much of a good thing is wonderful. Well, isn't that the truth? <laughs> or I got it all together, but I forgot where I put it. And then they have some, you know, really almost sentimental options like good night moon. I mean, how sweet would this be in a child's room? And I mean, look, the needlepoint, it's so kooky preppy, right? And I think you guys are going to have a blast exploring Furbish Studios. So now let's talk about an eyewear collection from the queen of maximalism, I think one of the most inspiring style icons ever, and that is Iris Apfel. And so this is Iris's collaboration with the optical brand Zinni. Iris is known for her statement glasses, and turns out statement glasses are a huge trend right now. So I think these designs are so exquisite and unique. There's so many different patterns and frame shapes. And what I think is really cool is that you can choose any of the frames and make them in readers, or you can make them in prescription lenses, or you can even make them sunglasses. One thing that I also think is really cool about Zinni is they'll personalize them for you just for a few dollars. They'll put them right there, and I think that's also really nice. I think one of my favorite things about this collection is that you can channel a little bit of Iris's adventurous spirit. She encourages us to have fun with style, and that's what it's all about, right? Okay, so our last category is cool classics. And this season, we saw a renewed focus on pieces that were wearable, you know, that had staying power, elevated takes on, you know, style staples. And I think you guys are really gonna love what we found here. It doesn't get more classic than the cap toe ballet flat. And what's not to love about a ballet flat, right? But you add the cap toe and that's instant elevation. It really just raises it up a level. And I just feel like with this shoe, it adds instant polish to whatever you're wearing. And these are from Steve Madden. They're a really great example of the trend. And you can choose between two colorways, the tan and the black, which I'm telling you, you're going to see absolutely everywhere this season. And this is, the perfect neutral. It will go with every single thing in your closet. But I'm also really excited about this new colorway, denim cacto ballet flats. Denim is also a big trend in shoes this season. So look out for those as well. And I've got to say, these are also a little bit of an investment, but I say they are worth it. These are incredibly well made. Like we said, they're never going out of style, and the brand says they're also made out of real leather. Next up, how about a low-tech makeover for your high-tech smartwatch? I mean, look how cool this watch band is, right? Such an easy way to jazz up your smartwatch. So according to the brand, these are real leather, and you can see here, these are double wraps. So I think it looks just kind of like a cool leather bracelet. And they're so easy to switch out. You just slide out your old watch band, slide in these. They come in lots of different colors, and I love this stitching detail. I mean, this is a high-end look without the high-end price tag. And last but not least, is there anything more classic than a crew neck cashmere sweater? I don't think so. So this is the Mongolian cashmere crew neck sweater. It is from the brand Quince. And guess what? It is $50. I mean, I didn't even know it was possible to get a, you know, a high quality cashmere sweater for $50, but I guess it is, right? So these are really, really soft. They're so lightweight. You can wear them all four seasons. I gotta say, these are cool, classic, and really, really cozy. If you'd like to add any of these pieces to your closet, you know what to do. Just scan the QR code to shop it all. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Up next, the hottest social media trends in beauty and shop today's editor picks for home and tech. 
So don't go away. Everyone, I'm Shop All Day contributor Makon Jovu, and today we are talking fan favorites when it comes to beauty. My friend and expert from Shop Today, Kamari Stewart, is here with us to share the pics that are taking over social media. And as a reminder, if you see something you like, just scan the QR code on the corner of your screen. I'm Mako. Hi, Kamari. Kamari, let's start with the first yes. product. This is the body wash. Tell me all about yes. it. Yes. Sonatarium has been so popular all over social media. Mm -hmm. This is their salicylic acid body wash. And salicylic acid, according to some dermatologists we've spoken to, say it's really good for body acne. Oh. So it's very gentle. You can use it on your face. You can use it on your body. And it's a beautiful multi-use product, perfect for dealing with body acne, keratosis pilaris, and things like that for smooth, exfoliated skin. Wonderful. And I see yeah. also here that it's fragrance free. It is. I can't wait to try it. So now yes. that we've talked about the body wash, we need to yes. moisturize our body. Yes. This is from a brand that we know and we love. Yes. What is this stick? Okay, so we all know Vaseline. It is a classic. We yeah. had the giant tubs growing up, but now you can take it on the go. Oh. You got this stick, you can hydrate your body anywhere. And for me, I love it because I have eczema on my hands. So I could just apply it really quickly, give myself some quick little hydration and then my hands are not sticky. You take it on the go, you can use it on your arms. I love that I'm picturing myself at yes. my office, my elbows are a little yeah. ashy. I don't know about you, my skin gets super dry in the winter. Yes. So I love having little products like this to take on the go. Yes, and you can just throw it in your bag and it's really easy. And it also leaves you with a little bit of shine too. So mm -hmm. you've got hydration and you've got a little glow to you at the end. Is it too soon to start thinking about holidays? I think this Never. would make like a great stocking stuff. Right? Never too soon. Okay, I'm Never obsessed. too soon. And yes. I like that it has no scent. So yes. I'm a fan of that. All right. So yes. Let's move on to the next fan favorite. We're talking about lip stains. Is it a lip gloss? What makes yes. this one so exceptional? Well, it's a lip stick, and Revlon is a classic mm -hmm. brand, classic brand. This is my own lipstick that I've used. I tried this for our first ever Shop Today Beauty Awards. Tell me. Okay, earlier this year. It's amazing. It's the shade Ingenue. Mm -hmm. I've never worn a red lip before. You've never worn never. a red lip? Why? You I just... was nervous, okay. you know? I never worn a red lip. It seemed a little too bold, like I wasn't ready, but I tried tried this, I fell in love. And it swipes on so easily, okay. and it lasts all day. Can I try it out? Absolutely, yeah. Does it come on matte, or is it shiny? 
For me, I feel like it went on with just enough of a glow, oh. but it's matte enough to last the entire day. Okay. It'll last through talking, through eating, through drinking. I love it. And okay. that's that's my favorite shade, so. Oh, yeah. now do you wear a liner with it or can you just apply it? Because I think with red lip, you don't want it like to get all over your face, right? right? Yeah. Right. I just apply and it does leave your lips looking really full. It is perfect for beginners. It's so pretty. Again, yeah. I love winter reds. They just look yes. great with any outfit. Like if I'm wearing athleisure and yes. I put on a little pop of like red, it looks so beautiful. Yes. I like this. Okay, That's so right. now we have that. I'm gonna put that to the side for yes. a second. If I'm doing a full, or maybe even a casual mm -hmm. sort of makeup look, I want to use lashes or I want to use a little bit of mascara. What do you have for us in that department? Okay, if you want to use lashes, but maybe you haven't tried it before yep. or you're not certain about how to do it, mm -hmm. this kit is my favorite. <laughs> I love it. My best friend's obsessed with it. My makeup artist loves it. And what these are, instead of an entire lash strip, they're just individual lashes. I gotta tell you, I okay. am so afraid of using individuals. I don't know how to use them. I prefer the strips. Why do you prefer the individuals? I feel like for me, these are just less intimidating than really? having to line up an entire strip along my eye. Yeah, they're super easy to take out if you just take these tweezers. Okay. And you can pull out, they have three different lengths, short, medium, and long. Oh, I see it right here. Yes. So you start with the short and then go Yes, so you can long? start with the short on the inner corner and then work your way outward to the long as long as you'd like. So for me right now, I have short on my inner corners and then I have mediums on the middle to outer corners. Gorgeous. They're so easy. Wonderful. Uh, speaking of mascara, you also yes. brought uh, another fan favorite. I did. And this gives you volume, right? Yes, okay. volume. So this ColourPop mascara is super popular on TikTok. It has over 9 million views on its hashtag. People love it because they say it gives them this extension-like feel without having to actually commit to extensions. Right. <laughs> it just takes a few swipes. Okay, I gotta pick it up so and see affordable. it here. We're actually supposed to switch out our mascara more often than we know, so I yes. like that this is one that we can try out. Does it come in different colors or is it just the black? It comes in black and brown, so really good staple colors you can wear all year long. Oh. If you want, yeah. The wand is small too, so that makes it easier to kind of yes. catch the lashes. We both have falsies. Yes. Can you use it on your falsies and on your natural lash too? Yes, you can. So that's the great thing about both of these, so that you can put your mascara of choice over your falsies to kind of bl help blend them out a little bit more, or you can just wear them on your own. This is so yeah. cute. I love the brown for like a day off yes. where I'm not really going into the office, but I just want a little extra glam. So yes. I like that it comes in different colors. All right, simple. so what do we have here? Are yes. we talking about the spray? We are. Why should we yes. apply a spray when we're doing our makeup routine? Yes. Well, you want your makeup to last, right? You spend all this time putting your look together, you know, putting on your foundation, your blushes, your eyeshadows. You want it to last longer than when you leave the house, right? Yeah. So a setting spray will help your makeup sit right on your face and not move. Okay. Okay. So for me, I have oily skin. Okay. And it is very hard to find a setting spray that actually keeps my makeup in place. And this is the one that does it for me. Can I try it out? So Absolutely. I have dry skin. Does this work on all skin it types does. or is it just for uh, oily skin? It works for all skin types. Ooh. I love it. And to show you how Ooh. much I love it, this okay. is my own that's <laughs> almost empty. I use it all the time. I use it in extreme temperatures. Oh. Okay, I use it on vacation, in Aruba, super hot, mm -hmm. but my makeup stayed in place. Absolutely love it and it's so affordable. Can you use it before you apply your makeup or do you only use it after to set your makeup in place? Yeah, so this is actually a primer, a set, and a refresh spray. Ooh. So you can use it before you put your makeup on. You can use it to set your makeup once you're done. Mm -hmm. And then if you have drier skin and throughout the day, you wanna, you know, give yourself a little refresh, give yourself a little glow, you can pump a few spritzes of this and it'll get you going. This, it smells, it has a, like a light little scent to it as yeah. well. I just sprayed it again to set my makeup and yeah. also as a refresh, so I like yes. that we can do all those different things with it. Yes. Love this one as well. Amazing. All right, we also have something for the eyes as well, we if you suffer from dry eyes, which by the way, yes. a lot of people probably do staring at their screens mm -hmm. for hours and hours on time. So what does this product yeah. do? So this is one of my favorite products ever and we're gonna open this together. Let's do it. Because these are self-heating eye masks. Okay. okay, so we're gonna open these up and the brand says what they do is they stimulate the natural oil glands in your eyelids. Uh -huh. It's stimulating those oil glands and helping you, you know, if you're staring at a screen all day. For me, I wear contacts, contacts and staring at a screen all day. Right. By the end of the day, my eyes are so tired and so dry and they have these little ear loops. Okay. You just rip them open and then you can put them over your ear 
you only need to wear it for about 15 minutes. 15 right? minutes, okay, 15 so at minutes. the end of the day. End of the day, no contacts in if you wear them mm -hmm. or anything like that. But I like to put them on to relax before sleep. Oh. You know, before bed, you just okay. pop them over your ears, put them on, 15 minutes, and if you feel they're starting to heat up, Cover. it's so nice. Um, and they're perfect for travel because they're disposable. You can take them on the go. If you're on a plane, you know, our skin gets really dry in planes, the same goes for your eyes. You just pop them on and you're good to go. It's great for eye strain. Oh, there we go. I got them on here. It's warm, but not hot. So it's like the perfect temperature. Like, I'm serious, Wait, so these are great. So nice. <laughs> these are fantastic. Oh. I live by these. These are so clever, and the fact that they come in the individual wraps is yes. also really great. So you can kind of give them out to your friends too. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And each box comes with about 10, so about you've got 10. plenty to go around. Awesome. Kamari, thank you for these. I see thank why you. they are fan yes. favorites. I'm a fan of a couple of them here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through the QR codes or links on our website. Next up, home and tech favorites from the Shop Today team. Stay with us. Hey everyone, I'm Adriana Brock and this is Editor's Picks. Today's episode is all about fan favorites and I've got some of our all-time all-stars for your home that our team is obsessed with. And you know what to do, scan the QR code on the corner of your screen with your smartphone to shop along with me. Okay, an easy way to upgrade your home is with lighting. So lighting can make the mood, it can set the tone whether you have guests over or you're just enjoying a nice night in. I really love the GE smart bulbs. I have these all over my lamps at home, whether it's my nightstand or my floor lamps in the living room. This is so genius because you don't need a light switch. Everything's controlled from your phone. So you just hook up the app to the GE light bulb and it's as easy as turning it on and off. And the best part is you can control the brightness level from your phone as well. So if you have guests over, you're having a dinner party, you keep it nice and bright. If you're at home just chilling out, reading a book, watching TV, you could set the dimness a little bit lower. Another thing I really love to do with these bulbs is connect it to my Google Home or my Alexa so I can use voice commands to turn them on and off. 
Another cool way to upgrade your lighting is with these awesome wireless globes. And I love them. They're so lightweight. They're so easy to connect. And this is a great way to create lighting, whether it's in a kid's room, you can use them indoor and outdoor too. I kind of love setting them when you're having people over as a centerpiece, it could be really fun. And again, like I said, using the app, all you have to do is control the lighting. You can change the color to anything you want, literally. Look at all these colors. The options are endless. You can go green, you can do, I'm gonna choose a pink color right now. See, so easy to use. And then you can also control the brightness level. And according to the brand, one charge lasts six hours. I don't know about you guys, but I love scents in my home. So I want every time someone walks in to have a signature fresh scent that they smell when they come into my home. It sets the ambiance, it's welcoming, it's refreshing. It's a smart diffuser and it's genius because all you have to do is plug it in and again, control everything in our home with our phones. You download an app and it's so easy to control. You can load up to two of the scents into one. So you can set schedules and reminders and a ton of different settings on there, including how intense you want the scent to be. Another thing I really love about this is that I don't have to use candles because I have a small kid at home, I also have a dog, and I don't want open flames at my house. So this thing is really great. Um, another really cool thing that the brand does is they team up with like a lot of high-end fragrances. So you can get fragrances from brands like Homesick, Anthropology, and they're really cool because a little bit goes a long way. According to the brand, each one lasts for about 100 hours depending on average use. And like I said, you can load two of these on here. So what I like to do is I'll have one in the foyer in the entryway. And then when I wanna plug in a different scent, I'll take that one to the other room and get that one going. And it's so easy to use with the app. And moving on to home entertainment. So if you are looking to upgrade your TV, whether it's a new TV or an old one, the Roku 4K is amazing. It's the Express Stick and it's a really small but mighty gadget. I love it because this little thing not only streams really fast with Wi-Fi connection, but if you have a 4K TV or an HDR TV, it's gonna give you that same resolution on your streaming as you get on your regular television. So you're not gonna compromise picture quality over this little guy. Another really cool thing about the Roku, when you're unlocking so much streaming content, we're talking thousands of channels and thousands of movies and TV shows, you can use the voice remote to really navigate and get what you want. So there's no more just sitting around and scrolling. Whether you wanna watch reality TV or an action movie, you just say it into the voice remote and it'll help guide you to what you wanna watch. Another small but mighty gadget that we really love at Shop Today is this Bluetooth transmitter. So this is really good if you have older devices in the home that may not have Bluetooth capabilities. This instantly acts as a receiver and a transmitter. So we have our producer's record player right here, which doesn't have Bluetooth capabilities. And the built-in audio here, these speakers, aren't the loudest. So she uses this little guy to connect it to a sound bar or a wireless speaker so she can listen to her records and get the audio that she really, really wants. Another great way to use this is to plug this into a TV that you have at home and you can connect your wireless earbuds or your headphones. I really like using this when I'm in my bedroom and my husband might be sleeping, but I wanna watch my TV. So I'll go ahead and plug in my Bose earphones or my earbuds into it and I can watch TV without disrupting my partner. Another fun hack that you can do with this is bring it on an airplane. So if you wanna connect those earbuds or those noise canceling earphones that you spend so much money on and then you can't use them on an airplane entertainment center, bring it with you and you'll have instant Bluetooth connection. Okay, and last but certainly not least, I am so obsessed with this one. It is the Bird Buddy Smart Feeder. And you're probably thinking like a bird feeder, this is not your average bird feeder. It uses AI technology to give you a live stream of all your visitors. It sends you photos and fun facts about them. What I really like too, is that it gives you instant alerts too. So if you get an instant alert, you can live stream it. And if you miss them, of course, it'll send you a nice little postcard straight to your phone. And the Bird Buddy also comes with a lifetime membership to their app, which has endless facts about all your favorite birds. It also comes in two colors to fit your style. How cute are those birds? It's been so much fun showing you our favorites in fashion, beauty, and home. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Tune in next week for another episode of Shop All Day. 
Thanks for watching. Sponsored by Walmart. What up, y'all? Welcome to the Today All Day Kitchen. Pasta is a staple for so many weeknight meals. It's easy to make, pretty hard to screw up, and oh so satisfying. I'm making pillowy soft ricotta gnocchi with peas and parm in a buttery sauce. And I'm cooking up a creamy chicken stroganoff with baby bella mushrooms. And I'm whipping up a spicy vegan pasta alla vodka. So start boiling some water. It's time to use that noodle. And let's get cooking. You can shop the ingredients featured here from our sponsor, Walmart, by scanning the QR code. Today earns a commission from purchases made through links on today.com. I have to admit, pasta is one of my go-to comfort foods, so I am very excited to share this recipe with you. The first thing we want to do is take our gorgeous ricotta and actually lay it out in a thin layer on paper towels. Since the ricotta is the base of our dough, we need to remove some of that moisture so it ends up really nice and light and fluffy rather than dense. We are going to let this sit for about 12 to 15 minutes just to make sure that the paper towel absorbs that moisture, but lucky for me, I made one before. And here is how it ends up looking when it is done. Stunning. Okay, so now let's just make our dough. We have our ricotta right here. Plop it right on in. So we have two large eggs here. I'm going to crack them right into our bowl. One cup of finely grated Parmigiano Reggiano cheese and some kosher salt, just to awaken the flavor. Before we add in our flour, we are going to delicately mix it all together. So it creates a really light, fluffy consistency. So now that this is looking really beautifully mixed together, that is when we know it is time to start adding in our flour. It's really important here to add your flour in a quarter cup at a time because we don't want to develop too much gluten, but we also want to make sure that our ricotta stays nice and fluffy. I'm just going to delicately mix it until there are no more big bits of flour, and we'll just keep mixing our final quarter cup. There we go, looking good. Now it is time to shape our gnocchi. And then we're going to take our dough mixture, kind of form it into a bit of a, it feels so good. It feels like a baby's bottom. Can we use that in the final cut? <laughs> it's what it feels like, okay. And now we're going to dust the top with a bit more flour. And this is my favorite tool whenever I'm making pasta, also whenever I'm cooking to easily pick things up. It is called a bench scraper. It's typically used for decorating cakes, making sure you have a nice smooth line of frosting around your cake, but it does such a good job of picking things up and it also does a great job of cutting things really evenly. And we are going to cut this into quarters. And the next thing we're going to do is we are going to roll this out into a beautiful snake that is about one inch thick. It feels so nice, <laughs> so soft. I like to cut off the end first, just because this end, it doesn't look as nice. And then what I'll do is I will just keep cutting little one inch pieces of pasta. And look at that. They look like little pillows, don't they? Look at how beautiful this is looking. And what we're going to do is we'll take that same bench scraper that we have, lift them up, and transfer them to a parchment lined baking sheet. All right, and we're just going to repeat this with our remaining pieces of gnocchi dough.
Looking good. Before we cook our gnocchi, I want to get started on the star of our sauce. This is a lemon butter sauce, so we are going to be using the zest and juice of two gorgeous lemons. And I'm going to show you my favorite way to prepare lemon zest. So we're just going to take the peeler and run it along lengthwise on this lemon, pulling the zest off of the lemon. So I'm just gonna remove any of this extra pith. And the reason why I'm removing this pith is because the pith is a bit bitter and we don't want any of that bitterness. And as you can see, I've stacked up all of this lemon into cute little, almost soldiers, if you will. Take your knife and rock it back and forth along that peel. It smells amazing. And you can see how beautiful these strips are. And then what we'll do is we'll take these shreds and turn them, and then we will run our knife across again to mince that lemon. And it took me a while to master these skills, let me tell you. It really all comes down to practicing over and over and over again. It's really repetition here. And now I'm just gonna take my knife and run through this a few more times. It's smelling absolutely amazing. Look at that zest though. I mean, it's like freshly fallen snow. <laughs> okay, let's clean up, get our water a boiling, and finish up this gnocchi. Our water is boiling. It is time to cook our gnocchi and you gotta pay attention because this all happens pretty quickly. But I promise you, you have all of the tools to absolutely crush it. The first thing we wanna do is salt our water. I'm taking kosher salt. Okay, this is boiling beautifully and we can use our fingers to plop these in because let me tell you, they are light and pillowy and Dropping them all in at once is going to cause them to smush together. We want these to cook until they float to the top, okay? They basically tell us, they're like, hey, what's up? And then to save some time, we are actually going to take our frozen peas and we're gonna pop those in as well. So this pasta water is liquid gold. I call it unicorn juice whenever I'm cooking because all of the starch in the water itself is actually going to help bind our sauce together. And we're going to start adding in our cubed unsalted butter a couple tablespoons at a time. You really want it to be cold butter because our goal here is to really emulsify everything. Take a whisk. Start whisking everything up. The gnocchi's starting to float. And now we are ready to bring our sauce and our gnocchi together. I've actually turned off the heat. If it is too hot, it may cause your sauce to break. So just make sure you turn that heat off. Next up, we're going to add in half of our lemon zest. How good does this look? Okay, next up, we are going to slowly add in our parm. Keep on mixing it back and forth so that it melts in a nice, even fashion. It is smelling so good. And as you can see, it is really looking super glossy. Mm, and it is tasting delish. So add in the lemon juice a little bit at a time. Again, we want to emulsify this in. We don't want to freak out the gorgeous sauce that we just worked so hard to build. It is coating all of those beautiful pillows of gnocchi. And now it is time to plate it up. Oh my gosh, you guys, how gorgeous does this look? Okay, a little extra parm, some freshly ground black pepper, and then I'll take a little bit of fresh mint, 
A little drizzle of olive oil gives the pasta gorgeous sheen. And there you go, homemade ricotta gnocchi in a lemon butter sauce with peas and mint. I'm so excited to try this. It is melting in my mouth. The parm adds the perfect amount of nuttiness and saltiness. I don't have any other words to say except I know you're gonna love this. Mm. So good. When you hear stroganoff, you're probably thinking beef, but this creamy comfort food pairs incredibly well with chicken. But the best part about this dish is that it all comes together in one pot. Less mess is always a win in my kitchen. All right, so first what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our dry rub. I like to use a little bit of smoked paprika. You can use the regular paprika too, but I think smoke flavors just bring a lot more body to your recipes. And then a little bit of dry thyme, and then a little bit of garlic powder. Give that a good swish. All right, now let's move on to our chicken breast. Now I've just got some lean, skinless chicken breasts, and I'm not sure about you, but I like to cut mine up into smaller pieces. The reason why, it's gonna cook a lot faster. All right, y'all, let's add this to our bowl. Get your hands all up in there. Don't be scared to get your hands dirty. I'm gonna just rinse off the cutting board and wash our knife so we can prep the mushrooms. Okay, now I'm gonna be using some Baby Bella mushrooms. I think they're super delicious. I'm just gonna slice this into small slices just like this. So I've got a ton of mushrooms here and you're probably thinking, yo, okay, that's not gonna fit in my pan. Don't worry, mushrooms are kinda like spinach. Once you start cooking them and add some heat to them, they shrivel up really, really small. So they will fit, I promise you that. Our mushrooms are cut up. I'm gonna set these aside. And now we're gonna fire up our pan and get cooking. All right, we're gonna place this on a medium high heat. Okay, with it nice and hot, in goes the oil. This is a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of heart health, a little sprinkle of that. Then I like to grab some tongs and in goes our chicken. Ooh, I love that sizzle sound. We want a nice sear, a nice color on the chicken. There we go. You're gonna wanna cook this for about four to five minutes on each side, and then look at this. Oh, just lift it up. And look at that beautiful color on the chicken. Move it around a little bit. If you're feeling brave, you can go ahead and toss it. But again, this is a no mess recipe, so <laughs> the least amount of mess you can make in your kitchen, the better. This chicken is just about ready. I'm gonna move my mushrooms a little bit closer. And then I'm gonna use my tongs. I'm gonna start taking out the pieces of chicken. Oh my God, look at that. It's just looking so good. Kev, you did that. 
If you're not your best cheerleader in the kitchen, I don't know what you're doing. You gotta just give yourself a pat on the back. It smells so good, it looks so good. Exactly what we want. I'm gonna set this over here. Now, I'm gonna add in the mushrooms now. Now, there's a lot of chicken flavor here. Ready, so we want that. Oh, we've got a good sear here. I'm just gonna wilt them just a little bit by using a little bit of our chicken broth. Just a little bit, just to create some steam. And also, this is gonna help to deglaze the bottom of our skillet as well. I'm gonna get my salt bay on, give me a little pinch of salt, just a little bit, mm -mm. boom. And the cool thing about mushrooms is that as they're shrinking up too, you know they're just soaking up all this flavor. So people that say, I don't like mushrooms, I'm like, yo man, mushrooms are like flavor bombs. They make your mouth water, it's that umami factor. More love to mushrooms this year. Now we're gonna try to create a little bit of a thick gravy here. We're gonna add in a little bit of flour. I'm gonna give this a quick toss first. And then we're gonna add in about a cup of our chicken broth. And what you'll see here, you're gonna still deglaze, but you see now the chicken broth is really cloudy. And that's because it's turning into that gravy that we want. I'm also gonna add in a little bit of Dijon. And just keep stirring, keep stirring. And this is looking beautiful. All right, now let's begin to bring everything together. In goes our chicken broth. Reserve some, then grab yourself the egg noodles, sprinkle those on, and then pour in the rest of that broth. And the noodles are going to absorb all of this liquid that's now like a gravy. So we're gonna bring it to a light simmer and you can see right here inside that the little light simmer going. That's just about right. And then we're gonna cover and cook this for about seven minutes. Oh my gosh, I stirred these once. Oof, they are looking good. Always check your noodles. And if you're thinking like, Kev, it's looking a little watery, what am I gonna do? Don't worry, I got you. Remember that it's gonna thicken up as it cools, but also it's gonna thicken up because we're going to add in our Greek yogurt now. Greek yogurt is really high in protein and it's really, really, really thick. And look at this. It looks like I added cheese, but I have not at all. And this is our swap for sour cream. Last bit of work, we're gonna add in our chicken. Well, you can't be here to smell it, but I'm just gonna describe it. We need that smell-o-vision from Willy Wonka. So I'm gonna plate it right here and finish it off with some fresh parsley. You like some other chicken? Try this chicken stroganoff. You're seeing it first here today and then today all day kitchen. I'm just gonna hit it with some fresh black pepper. Ooh, look at that. I don't know about y'all, but I'm excited about eating. Here we go. Get a little bit of mushroom, a little bit of noodle, and then some of this succulent, lean chicken breast. Oh my God. Mm. Yeah, this will make you get happy in church. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> I guarantee your friends and family are going to love this dish.
on Staten Island, so I can't even tell you how many pasta dishes I've eaten over the years. One of my absolute favorites is penne a la vodka. So today, I'm giving that beautiful pink sauce a vegan makeover. And I'm putting a little twist on that penne too. Let's get started with the crunchy breadcrumb topping. So first, I'm gonna get a small skillet over medium low heat, and we're gonna add in a little bit of olive oil. So for our breadcrumbs, we're gonna use panko breadcrumbs. I love using panko because it's extra crunchy and it's plain, so we can add anything to it and really manipulate those flavors. And the way we're gonna do that is by adding some red chili flakes because we want this spicy and a little bit of nutmeg to really round out those flavors and add that earthy component. A little bit of kosher salt and a little bit of freshly ground black pepper. And just we're gonna cook this over medium low until it gets a nice golden brown color. So we're essentially just toasting it in the pan. This usually takes about five minutes to get nice and golden and crispy. This is a test. If it loosely moves in the pan, that means it's ready. So to start off any good sauce, you have to start off with your aromatics. We're gonna start with one medium white onion and some garlic. So we just wanna get a small dice on this. And next up, garlic. We're using about four cloves of garlic. I just like to give them a light crush to help me with the chopping process. Another great way to prep all of this is actually just blitzing it up in a food processor. Just putting it on chop and giving it a few pulses and it'll all be roughly chopped. So you wanna start off with a really large pan and get it over medium high heat. To this, we're gonna add a layer of olive oil and we're also gonna add in one tablespoon of vegan butter. Traditional vodka sauce is so indulgent and creamy, so we're gonna add a few vegan options to help bring that creaminess to the sauce. So now that our oil is hot and the butter is sizzling, let's go in with our onion and garlic. You also wanna get some salt in at this point because that's gonna help the onions sweat out all of their moisture. Now, I said this was spicy vodka sauce, so now come in our spicy elements. We're gonna add some red chili flakes, but let's not stop there. We're gonna add in one of my favorite chili peppers, Calabrian chilies. And I just so happen to be wearing chili earrings to celebrate the occasion. So we wanna cook these for about five minutes until the onions are sweating and almost translucent. So now let's go in with our tomato paste. The tomato paste is gonna add basically a really concentrated tomato flavor. So it's gonna feel like we've been cooking this sauce all day, but really, we haven't been. So get this incorporated into the onions. So, the star of the show, some vodka. No, this is not a shot for me. This is for the pasta, maybe that'll be later. So once we add the vodka in, all of that alcohol is gonna evaporate, so you don't have to worry about any alcohol actually being in there, but the flavor of the vodka will become concentrated, which is what adds that unique flavor to vodka sauce, which I happen to love. We're gonna go in with some crushed tomatoes. We're gonna go in with a little sugar. Now, don't hate on this. This is really gonna help balance the flavors again. There's a lot of acidity in the tomatoes, and then we also have a lot of spice, so the sugar is gonna help round everything out. As well as some dried oregano. So I actually like to take this and rub it in between my fingers to get the oils in the oregano activated. We want our spicy vodka sauce to be smooth and silky, and in order to achieve that, we're gonna use an immersion blender. This looks great, look how vibrant that is. It really is starting to look like vodka sauce. So now we're gonna add a few dairy elements to our sauce. We're gonna add a little bit of vegan creamer, as well as some vegan cream cheese. So you wanna make sure to incorporate all of that in. 
and you could see the color is this beautiful light orange vodka sauce color. We're gonna add in one whole sprig of fresh basil, right in, and we're gonna let that simmer with the sauce. Okay, let's check in our pasta water. Oh, it's boiling. Before we do anything, we always wanna salt our pasta water. And now for our pasta. I just wanna show you guys how fun this is. So this is called a colony Pompeii. I think colony means column and Pompeii is obviously a city in Italy. But to me, it's just a beautiful large fusilli and it looks delicious to eat. So we're gonna get these in. This pasta is so big, it takes about 10 or 12 minutes to cook. So I'm gonna start cleaning up and get everything out of the way and get ready to plate. Our pasta looks ready, so let's add it into our vodka sauce. Beautiful. This is so fun. Look at these swirls. And this is liquid gold. This is our starchy, salted water. So we're actually gonna add a little ladle into our pasta to make it even silkier. want to make sure to gently combine this with the sauce because we don't want to break up our beautiful giant swirls of pasta. Look how fun this looks. I'm so excited to eat it, but we can't forget about our spicy, crunchy breadcrumb topping. So it's now completely cooled, so we can just use our hands to garnish it as if we were garnishing it with Parmesan. And then if we want to be extra fancy, we can add a little sprig of fresh basil. Okay, I've waited long enough, so we're now ready to dig in. I'm so excited to eat this shape. I feel like the proper way is from the bottom. Wow, I think Staten Island would be proud. This is so delicious and so fun. Look at that. Chef's kiss. This is delicious. That's a beautiful piece of chicken. Well, thank you. <laughs> I'm Sama Dada. I'm a cookbook author and recipe developer in the plant-based food scene, which is becoming more innovative every day. I'm on a mission to see how startups, restaurants, and chefs are changing the way we see and eat plants. And I can't wait to show you how to bring more delicious dishes into your kitchen. Comfort food. From a decadent cheeseburger, to a sky-high layer cake, or my favorite, my mom's spicy warming doll. 
Usually these indulgent eats aren't exactly vegan friendly. Even many traditional dal recipes are often prepared with ghee. But these days you can easily ditch the dairy and you won't even miss the meat with new plant-based takes on traditional comfort foods being served at restaurants all across the country. In Portland, I'm meeting a chef making crunchy fried chicken without the bird. And in New York, I'm sampling a big apple staple, cheesecake. But this one happens to be raw and vegan. But first up, I'm heading to Los Angeles, my hometown, to visit a popular fast food chain serving up show-stopping burgers without the beef. Growing up in SoCal, there was nothing more comforting than grabbing a burger by the beach and cruising down the Pacific Coast Highway. Monty's Good Burger in LA is recreating that iconic experience for a plant-based generation. Everything here, from a melty cheeseburger to fully loaded fries and even their creamy milkshakes is totally vegan. Lexi Jarris is the co-founder of the Up and Coming chain. What inspired you to start this place? I and my partners, it, it was a time in the vegan space in LA where there wasn't just a really good casual vegan burger. I felt like in order to get that like fix for a burger, I had to go somewhere with like white tablecloths and like you had to be waited on. In 2018, Lexi founded Monty's with Bill Fold and Nick Adler. Lexi and Bill both work in the music industry. He's a festival producer, and Lexi is a creative consultant for Coachella. Nick brought the culinary chops as a former food director for music festivals. I think because we all come from music, when it came time to like market and brand and like strategize how to grow, we were all coming at it from such like a non-traditional viewpoint. The Monty's team runs their business differently from many restaurants. They focus on creating digital buzz with celebrity milkshake collabs, pop-ups at festivals, and lots of merch. While Monty's now has five locations and millions of burgers sold, they make more money from their swag, like hats, t-shirts, and mugs, than the food. The star of said merch and the brand's namesake is Lexi's adorable schnoodle mix. How did Monty become the mascot? He's lucky. He's a lucky pup. He's very lucky. He was found essentially on the streets of Riverside, which is kind of nuts. We looked for his owners. They were nowhere to be found. So after a few weeks, I was like, this is my, this is my son now. But it really kind of, again, kind of goes to show like the playfulness and like the headspace we were in when we started Monty's. Do work a lot with animal rescues now, and that is kind of something that's like in our ethos. We care a lot about animals, obviously, um, but not just <laughs> eating less of them, but also giving some like fluffy guys and then around the LA area homes. Monty's is dedicated to getting pets adopted, from dogs to cats and even guinea pigs. But their main mission is to change how people see vegan food. I think what's really interesting is that there is this stigma and this stereotype that vegan food has to be super healthy, right? When I first became vegan, a lot of my friends that aren't vegan would have dinner with me and they would leave and be like, I'm still hungry. I hate when Lexi picks the restaurant. I think if you come here, I highly doubt that someone will leave here. I mean, still being hungry. It's, it's lots of tots, lots of shake, lots of burger. To me, I feel that anytime someone is eating a plant-based meal instead of a meal that has like dairy, meat, whatever, that's just kind of a win for like the animals, the planet, their health, all that good stuff. I love that. Tell me about the future of Monty's. Where do you want to take this? Yes, I mean, honestly, like the sky's the limit. Like I don't want to say too big, but we're all definitely thinking like as big as America wants us to be. Amazing. I'm so hungry now. <laughs> I want everything. I will order every single thing.
Monty's Good Burger is reimagining fast food for a new era. Co-founder Lexi Jarris introduced me to Gemma Kessler, the chain's operation manager. Gemma trains new chefs on how to cook the entire menu, which includes a plant-based chicken sandwich and fully loaded fries. And she's teaching me how to make the restaurant's signature item. Okay, Gemma, you are gonna show me how to make the Monty's Good Burger. Let's do it. Let's I think go. You're ready. Making a Monty's Burger isn't all that different from prepping a beef patty. First up, Gemma oils the grill so the Impossible patties don't stick. And then we're gonna smash those patties down. So I am going to use both spatulas and really get that squeezing out the edges there, as you can see. Nice. Number one. Number two. Perfect. Awesome. And now we're gonna have those just crisp up and cook on one side, and then we're gonna flip them. Flip it! Check Four that out. Shit. Good thing I didn't screw that up on camera. <laughs> right. Next up, two slices of vegan cheese. And now I'm gonna have you spray a little bit of water on the outside there, creating some steam. All right. Perfect. Nice, that's gonna get all melty and melty, delicious. Melty, cheesy, we delicious. Love it. Next, we're going to raise this and add some grilled onions. My favorite. <laughs> this is like your entire store of grilled Amazing. onions. All right, perfect. Perfect, perfect. All right, and that's that it. ready to go. To finish the burger, we get the perfect toast on our buns. See you later. <laughs> Time for the Monty's house bread. It's similar to a Thousand Island sauce. And what burger is complete without a pickle? Three juicy house-made pickles. Now the patty meets the bun. To your bottom this bun. This is the best part of my day. Okay. <laughs> this is going straight on here. There you go. I feel like I'm hired. I don't want to be forward, but okay. <laughs> I think you might be. <laughs> this is the final step though. This is the important part. Okay. To build it all together. All right. Yeah, but you're gonna fold that forward. Gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I am so excited to eat this. I want to try everything else on your menu. Should we go find Lexi? Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> okay, I'm so Ready? Excited. Cheers. Ready? Cheers. Cheers. Ah! Okay. I can't. It's just goes to remember. It's better. This is so insane. Because it has your touch. Lexi, what does it mean to you to have this amazing and plant-based contribution to California burger culture? This is our Culver City location, so this is definitely our most family-friendly location. We have customers that like come in strollers with their parents, obviously, <laughs> and they get like pins and stickers and things like that. But like these kids are gonna grow up with us around the corner from us. I think that's so just, like brings me a lot of joy. Especially growing up in California, and this was such a big part of my culture, like getting a burger whenever going to the beach, and yeah. I feel like I can have that experience again in a plant based way. So thank you and cheers. It means the world. Thank you so much. <laughs> have to take a picture, please, because this just feels right. We love photos around here. Cheers. This juicy burger had me craving more comfort food. So I'm off to Portland, where one vegan chef with a unique story is putting his own twist on Southern soul food.
Portland, Oregon is one of the best cities for plant-based living. From vegan donuts in every flavor imaginable, to the world's first all-vegan barbecue joint, there is no shortage of delicious veggie-forward fare here. One of my favorite spots is Dirty Lettuce, a vegan soul food eatery helmed by a chef breaking barriers. This is Super very tasty. visually impressive. Like, this literally is taking me back to like a KFC bucket. Yes. <laughs> Alkabulon Moroski is the chef and founder of Dirty Lettuce. How do you feel like you're making vegan food more accessible, more equitable, something that is digestible, no pun intended, yeah. <laughs> to a wider audience? I feel like a lot of the vegan industry for a long time has had this very, very heavy focus on like making it as healthy and holistic as possible. And that is very important, but it's like there's a reason why McDonald's is like the colossal juggernaut it is, because sometimes people just want to be able to eat something greasy and delicious and feel good in their stomach. <laughs> Alcabalon's soul food recipes are rooted in the southern cooking traditions from their hometown of Jackson, Mississippi. You grew up in Mississippi, pescatarian, so eating a lot of veggies, no meat. Can you talk to me about what that was like, especially in the South, the very meat-heavy culture? Yeah, it was, it was one of the things that made me want to do this, was I spent my whole childhood in the South, like, surrounded by lots of fascinating cuisine, like gumbos, etouffees, and whatnot. I remember always wanting to be able to try and enjoy these different foods and never really having the opportunity to, and until I decided to just do it myself. For instance, it means, like, cookouts are a really, really big thing in the South, and if you don't eat a lot of animal products, and you generally can't really go and engage with them to the same extent everyone else can. Growing up in the South was challenging in different ways for Al Kabulon, who is biracial and identifies as gender neutral. Did you feel like you had a sense of belonging growing up? I definitely don't really describe myself as a very masculine, per masculine person, but being a person that most people ID as just like a black man when they see me meant that there was a lot of intense pressure to like put on a performance of masculinity that just wasn't me at all. And I wonder, was that a reason why you started cooking? Was it a way for you to find a sense of belonging in any way? I did really enjoy when I first started messing around with these recipes in the South was being able to go to people who I'd known for years and were very, very against just like general vegan cooking or like, I need my meat. <laughs> and being able to come up with something and feed it to them and have them actually enjoy it and be able to go like, okay, this didn't come from a dead animal, but I'm actually enjoying my meal. Alcabalon's mother, who is also a vegetarian, taught them how to cook. And there were always tons and tons of cookbooks all over my household. They loved working with seitan and started developing a line of plant-based meats after college. But in 2019, a new law was proposed in Mississippi that changed Alcabalon's career path. I'd already been devising recipes to move somewhere else for quite a while, and then the Mississippi legislature decided they were going to introduce a bill that would actually ban the labeling of any plant-based product as any kind of meat. While the law ultimately was halted in court, it was a signal for Al Cabalon to pack their bags and head west. Why did you choose Portland? So I actually had a marvelous opportunity here. So I started off in Portland in a vegan food pod. So it was like supposed to be the first vegan food pod to appear in the US. That pod was Shady Pines Food Court, the country's first all vegan food cart park that opened in early 2020. While Shady Pines shuttered a year later, it helped introduce Alcabalon's food to the city's vibrant culinary community. I was definitely very well received and I got to be part of the publicity of like a vegan food pod, all vegan. One year after launching their cart, Alcabalon was able to open a brick and mortar spot in 2021. Here, the chef experiments with new seitan meat swaps for southern staples like pork ribs and catfish. I think in a lot of restaurants, if you go and order three different things made of seitan, you're going to get roughly the same seitan prepared in different ways. But I actually make a point to have like a completely different protein blend for each different fake meat that I do. Speaking of all this food, I'm starving. I'm not gonna lie, I caught a glimpse of that fried chicken and I think I might need it. Ooh, well, how about if we get back to this kitchen? I'm ready, <laughs> let's do it. All right. <laughs> Make your iconic fried chicken out of seitan. Can you tell me about what seitan is and how you make this delicious chicken? 
Oh yeah, so seitan is, essentially it is pure, it is a mass of pure wheat gluten protein. Actually you would make it by just like taking regular wheat flour and washing it and until you have like a sticky protein left over. But these days you can just buy like the dehydrated gluten on its own, which is what we have here, mixed with a whole bunch of different spices. Alcabalon adds a liquid mixture to the wheat gluten. This is the secret behind the different meat textures. Yeah, and the idea is that depending on how much like oil, fat, and water you have in your wet blend, you're gonna end up with a different final product of your seitan. The next step is similar to making bread. The seitan and liquid mixture are kneaded together. Like it doesn't feel like dough. Yeah. You know, it feels like it's something like, that has a lot more texture and, and pull to it. Yeah, the weird pseudo dough. <laughs> it's very much a pseudo dough. <laughs> The dough transforms into seitan after simmering in veggie stock. After the seitan cools, it's cut into fillets and soaked overnight. Then the seitan is ready to be breaded and fried. Here is the chicken. A major thing for me with all my seitans is I try to deliberately make them as irregular as possible. Because mm. if you get like an actual piece of meat from an animal, it's not going to be it's a uniform perfect. disc. Right, yeah. right. The process starts with a healthy sprinkle of cayenne. Then, just like a regular dredge, it's covered in flour and a secret spice mix. The egg-free wet mixture is where things really get interesting. Oh yeah, so this is just a blend of mustard, water, a little bit of cornstarch, and my house spice blend. I love that. Mustard, why mustard? You'll see it sometimes in like old southern fried chicken recipes, yeah, but it's yeah. not nearly as common as you'll see, just like your standard egg or buttermilk wash. It's not as much a flavor thing as like a texture thing. Mustard is kind of acidic in a way that reacts with your breading. So yeah, going from there, we get right over into our second dry bath. Oh. And from oh. here, we get pretty weird with it. This is where we're actually building that texture of the chicken by hand. How do you do that? You just kind of... Yeah, so we start by just sort of coating chicken, coating our breading on there, getting a nice pasty, goopy mix. So yeah, that's how it's like, that looks like very rough and all over the place, but that's roughly what a piece of chicken is gonna look like before we fry it. Wow. It's like very rough, very lumpy. Yeah, we'll check that out. Oh, how cool. <laughs> Do you trust me to make one? Absolutely. Okay. Are you ready for my contribution? Yes. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we get these into some oil. Okay, oh yes, let's do it. The seitan chicken fries in canola oil until it's golden brown. Oh, I yeah. loved my fried chicken and then I went plant-based and I never had five chickens. So this oh, is yeah. That's my moment. goal. It's like let people have all the tasty things yeah. they ate growing up and not yeah. feel guilty about it. Oh, yeah. They're probably just about ready to pull this up. That is looking pretty happy. That's definitely like the go-to signature is just getting those proper flakes. Wait, do you hear this? You got that? I think you eat with all of your senses, right? Okay, mm -hmm. cheers. Cheers. All right, going for it. Stop. <laughs> like, I know you know this is good, but... That's usually the response I go for. <laughs> it's well, so good. <laughs> the, like, oh my God, I can't even speak. The breading is insane. It literally tastes like chicken. Oh, yeah. the, one of the things I realized as I started messing with more and more vegan meat is that a lot of what people associate with a lot of traditional meat that they've eaten is not actually the protein itself, but just the way it's prepared. Right. Cheers, this is delicious. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you for joining. But as delicious as Al Cable on Seitan is, their bigger goal is making vegan food more approachable. How do you think that you're making vegan food more equitable? A lot of people, it's like vegan food in general, I think is still a bit overpriced in most markets. Well, honestly, a big thing for me is I try to make sure that if I offer any product on my menu, I can make sure I can provide people with like a big hefty portion size and not charge them $35 for one meal. <laughs> Up next, a Brooklyn sweet shop that's ditching the dairy and creamy cheesecake.
Simply Sweet, a vegan dessert shop in Brooklyn, specializes in raw desserts. That means nothing on the menu is heated above 104 degrees, so you won't find any ovens in here. Opened in 2019, Simply Sweet makes treats that are free from gluten and refined sugar. You'll find anything here to satisfy a sweet tooth, from chocolate bars to creamy cakes and fruity acai bowls. Because I love sweets, everything sweet. I love desserts and caramel and fruits, everything sweet. <laughs> Alessia Mirpochoyeva is the owner and head pastry chef. She moved to the US from Russia in 2012. After landing in New York, Alessia quickly got her start in the food industry at Juice Press, then a fast-growing smoothie and organic food chain with a celebrity following. I fell in love with their food and smoothies and juices. And when I got there, it was like a different world because um, I've never heard about some ingredients like maca powder, goji berries. I'm like, what? <laughs> Alessia also worked as a line cook at a private school in Manhattan. That's where she truly fell in love with cooking, whipping up delicious baked goods for the students. When Alessia became a mother a few years ago, she decided to start an eatery of her own. Can you tell me about why you started Simply Sweet? When I was pregnant, I was thinking how I'm gonna feed my baby when he's born. And when he uh, was growing up, and then he started to uh, pick food from my plate. I thought <laughs> I'm gonna give him a piece of broccoli, but when I look into my plate, I see like slice of pizza, <laughs> you know, with sausage, pepperoni, lots of cheese. I'm like, like no. I don't want to feed my kids. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then I realized um, I have to start um, from myself to change myself, change my everyday eating habits, so I can be an example for my son. Her first step, lots and lots of research. I'm not a professional chef, so I'm self-taught. And um, I go to Google every time <laughs> when I have a question. I took some courses about chocolate, how to make chocolate at home, how to make raw vegan desserts and vegan desserts, not only raw. Yeah, I use Instagram a lot because I follow bloggers and recipe creators. I always uh, try stuff at home. I love to feed my family and hear their feedback, good feedback. After three years of running Simply Sweet, being a mom is still Alessia's top priority. And uh, I have a son, he's almost six years old and he likes my dessert. He's a big fan of chocolate. He likes chocolate truffles, chocolate cake. <laughs> so I try to keep him healthy. You must be the most popular mom in town. Like, do you bake everyone's cake? Uh, or no bake? I keep saying bake, but really there's no baking involved. I don't know. I would say yeah, maybe I'm pretty famous here. <laughs> I had to learn the secrets behind Alessia's unique treats. So she taught me how to make her favorite item on the menu, lemon blueberry cheesecake. It's super easy and literally everybody can make it at home. You're not dealing with an oven. You're sticking no. it in the freezer, you're letting it set. Yeah, it's a lot. It. Yeah, it's like low maintenance as well. Yeah. First, the hazelnuts go in then shredded coconut, and my favorite sugar alternative, dates. I love dates, it's like a part of my life <laughs> and brand. Yeah. The mixture is blended in a food processor for two to three minutes. So what should the texture be like, you know, when we know it's done? Yeah, uh, it usually changes the color. Okay. And it's like a little darker. Wet. Yeah. The pie crust is then firmly pressed into a mold. The sticky dates help bind the raw ingredients while the base freezes for about 15 minutes. The crust is in our freezer. Yeah. What are we going to do next? Uh, so now we are going to make our cheese part. First in, soaked and drained raw cashews. Soaking the cashews makes them easier to blend and ensures a creamy, smooth consistency. Our house made coconut milk. I love that you make your own coconut milk. So how do you make it? Uh, we just mix coconut butter and filtered water. Coconut butter. Nothing Ooh. else. I <laughs> love that, very minimal. Next up, maple syrup, vanilla extract, lemon juice, and melted coconut oil. Okay, so you've yeah. melted and cooled that? Yeah. Okay. It's already melted and we use coconut oil so it stay firm mm -hmm. and when you um, take the cake out of freezer, it doesn't fall apart. The mixture is blended until it's totally smooth with no lumps. Can you believe this creamy filling is completely vegan? Okay, it's perfect. So now we're gonna put it in the freezer for like an hour. Okay. And then we're gonna uh, do our blueberry layer. Amazing. Yeah. See you later.
To the remaining cashew mixture, we add frozen blueberries and then blend again. With the fruit, the mix transforms into a stunning purple. Love it. beautiful. Very creamy. Color. It's so pretty. Wait, we have to show them this color. Sure. Check this out, everyone. Look at that. The first layer freezes for an hour before adding the blueberry flavored cream. Alessia was prepared with a fully frozen, half finished cheesecake for me to polish off. Gorgeous. And then to the freezer it goes? Yeah, to the freezer for about five hours. Okay. Then, and then it will be ready. And it'll be worth it. Those yeah. five hours will be worth it. <laughs> All right. Thankfully, I didn't have to wait five hours. So this is how it looks like. Yay, it's so pretty. And we're gonna unmold it. Okay. After unmolding, the cheesecake gets a final decoration. Shavings of Alessia's house-made chocolate. So how long would you wait for it to thaw before you start slicing it to serve? Uh, we will leave it at room temperature on the table for okay. about 30 to 40 minutes. Okay. And then we can cut it. Well, luckily, you're very prepared. You have slices yeah. for us. So can we taste? Yes, yeah, sure, of course. I'm so excited. Here we go. Oh, look how pretty they are. Mm -hmm. <gasps> this spoon is really fun. Wow. Mm. It's so delicious. You know, cake is such a comfort food for so many people, and a lot of people don't think they can have this healthier, delicious, decadent options. What are your favorite customer reactions from people who maybe haven't tried this before? Most of them don't realize um, our dessert doesn't have eggs and flour, and they're like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> they can't believe it. This is so fun to make it, and I will be eating this and taking it with me. So okay. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. With innovative techniques and lots of imagination, modern chefs are turning classic meals and treats into plant-based comfort foods everyone can enjoy. Sponsored by Walmart. Welcome to the Today All Day Kitchen. Now everybody loves a hearty meal. But when the cooking is done, nobody loves doing dishes. So today, we're making three delicious recipes that all come together in just one pot. I'm making a one pan chicken pot pie with some of my favorite spring veggies. I'm whipping up Tuscan style tortellini soup. And I'm making my flavor packed Thai inspired green curry noodles. You can shop the ingredients featured here from our sponsor, Walmart, by scanning the QR code. Today earns a commission from purchases made through links on today.com. Growing up, it was always a treat for me and my siblings to make frozen chicken pot pies when my parents were out to dinner and we had to fend for ourselves. And today I will be making a more grown up version of this classic comfort food. This recipe has some of my favorite veggies and I know your whole family will absolutely love it. So the first thing we're gonna do is get our onion going. Look at that stunning dice. Move those onions off to the side to prep the rest of our veg. This is fennel, gorgeous, gorgeous fennel. Bulb, fronds, and the stems, okay? So I really love using fennel in honestly any kind of cooking. I promise you all of that anise flavor is going to mellow out beautifully once it hits the pan. We have these fronds here. We're gonna just give them a nice rough chop. So we've taken the stem off and then I'm going to cut it in half like so. We'll go from the top to the back like so. And then rock it through from the back to the front. Let's quickly do our celery. And the theme here is green. I don't know if you can tell. All green veggies, that's what we're working with today. Okay, finally our garlic clove. And you also don't have to worry about chopping this too fine. So let's get to sauteing. We are going to add in a nice hunk of unsalted butter. 
We are also going to add in some olive oil. Once it is all melted and as it starts bubbling like so, that is when we know to add in our veggies. These will all go in at the same time. These veggies are really running away from me here. <laughs> okay. We want these veggies to break down, to caramelize a bit, to develop their flavor. And while that is going, we are going to get to work on the rest of our veggies because believe it or not, we are adding even more vegetables to this already full vegetation experience. All right, so next up we have our kale. This is lacinato kale, also known as dinosaur kale. It is flat, it's not as crazy and curly like curly kale. And my favorite way to prepare it is I will take the bottom right where the stem is, grab either side, and then take my finger and pull that stem right through. And there you go. Okay, so while this is going, we are actually going to add even more flavor with some fresh thyme. And then what we're gonna do is we're just going to bunch it on up in pieces, slice it thin, just like so. How about that? Fabulous. We're gonna get to work on our chicken. A great shortcut that I love to do is I love to use a rotisserie chicken. I am pulling off this skin just because we don't necessarily need it and we can chop this up. My siblings prefer white meat and I prefer dark meat with chicken, so it's good. We'll have a little for me and the rest for my sibbies. <laughs> Okay, looking good. So now that our veggies are ready to rock, it is time to create what I like to call an almost roux. <laughs> so we are just going to add in this all-purpose flour, but it's really important when you add in flour to a pot pie, to anything as a thickening agent, that you take the time to cook the flour down. So we wanna just keep cooking this down for about two to three minutes. Okay, it's time to thicken this up. We're gonna start by doing one cup of the stock. We wanna make sure that all of this flour breaks down. And now what we wanna do is we wanna bring this to a simmer to continue thickening it a bit more. Next up, we are going to add in our kale to wilt it and to also thicken up our mixture a bit. And now that this looks nice and thick, we're going to add in our final ingredients, our peas, our fennel fronds, and our chopped up chicken. This is my favorite thing to do with a homemade pot pie. I love using puff pastry, store-bought. I'm taking a little bit of all-purpose flour and just giving it a nice light dusting. Open it on up. This is one sheet of puff pastry. We're gonna give this one more light dusting of flour. Take your rolling pin. The main thing here is to make sure that you roll it out so that it fits whatever pan you are working with. And we're just going to fold it, bring our pan over, lift it up, and then open it up like a book and dress it right over the top. You cute, you gorgeous. I love ya. We wanna make sure that we have about one inch around our cast iron. And you can just trim the corners off of that pastry. I have egg wash right here. 
And the reason why we're popping this onto the top and brushing it over the top of our pastry is because if we don't, what's gonna happen is our pastry is gonna end up looking a little sad. So we're just taking a pastry brush and really delicately brushing that egg wash over the top and the sides of the pastry. Okay, we wanna make sure it has some ventilation. You wanna make sure that you have at least three, maybe four, right in the center of that pie so that steam can escape. And then my favorite little extra layer of pizzazz is to take some flaky salt and sprinkle it over the top of this pot pie. So this is going to go into the oven for about 25 to 30 minutes and just check about halfway through. Oh man, our pot pie has cooled. We want it to cool for about 10 minutes after it comes out of the oven. And now there's only one thing left to do, slice it up and give it a taste. And then we're gonna give this a nice big scoop. Oh yeah. Look at that. Mmm. It is unbelievable how food can instantly transport you back to a moment. It is just bursting with spring beauty and energy. I love it. One more bite, because we deserve it. I absolutely love Italian food, just like everybody else. It's so comforting and it always tends to hit the spot. Now with minimal prep, my tortellini soup is just the thing to make at the end of a long day because it's just in one pot. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fire up the big pot that you have in your kitchen. I'm gonna set it onto a medium high heat. Next, we're gonna move on to the sausage. This is spicy Italian sausage. I think it adds a lot of flavor. Just remove the casing from the sausage. Well, sticky little thing, isn't it? <laughs> then we're just gonna put this right into the pan right now. Squeeze that sausage right on out, right into that pot. Right now, I'm breaking up the meat, so that way it'll be dispersed. It'll cook a little bit faster. Let's move on to chop up our veggies. So I've got some onion here. We're just gonna dice this up, slice it in half. And you can do generous chunks. There we go. Moving on, we got some fresh tomatoes here. Gonna dice these up as well. And you know what? I'm thinking our sausage is about finished. Yeah, it's great. It's got a great color on there. We're gonna take a slotted spoon and we're gonna remove 
the sausage because we don't want to take out the oil. We want the oil from that sausage to help out with the flavor. There we go. Now, since there's not a lot of oil left after the sausage, I am gonna add in just a little bit of olive oil. I'm gonna add in my onions, I'm gonna saute those. You know I am a garlic lover, and if you love Italian food, you gotta be a garlic lover too. Now, got some carrots here. Because they're so small, I'm not gonna peel them, I'm just gonna begin to dice them up as well. But just make sure you wash your carrots. Give that a nice stir. All right. In goes the garlic. Slide that on in. Give it another stir. And we're gonna cook this for about one minute. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna deglaze the bottom of this pot. We're gonna do that with some red wine because we're fancy here in the Today All Day kitchen. So grab your favorite red wine. I'm gonna be using a blend, and we're gonna add about a half a cup. There we go. And if you wanna toast yourself during this recipe, I won't judge you. That's your business. Mm -hmm. Let this simmer down. And in go the tomatoes. I'm gonna let the tomatoes rest in here with the onions and the red wine and garlic. Let that simmer for a minute. I'm gonna finish preparing the rest of our veggies. Basil. I'm gonna roll them up, stack the leaves. I'm just gonna just like this. Beautiful. That should be enough. I'm gonna reserve some too for garnish at the very end. Check back in on our tomatoes and onions and look at this. You can see how thick it is. It's kind of slushy. That's exactly the texture that we want. I think this looks good. What about y'all? Yeah, Cam, it looks real good. Okay, let's start to bring everything else together. I'm gonna add in some oregano. Adding back in the sausage as well. Give this a good stir. And then our stock. Pour it in. This is some chicken stock. Another pinch of salt, some black pepper, and lastly, I'm gonna sprinkle in some basil. Boom. Do we want some heat? Yeah, Kev, we want the heat. Bring the heat. All right, some red pepper. Boom. I'm gonna crank up the heat so that it comes to a boil, and then as soon as it starts to boil, you're gonna wanna reduce the heat down to a simmer.
we're gonna take some kale. All I'm doing is folding the you know, kale over, and I'm gonna take out the big stem. Take it at the very top, and just drag the knife along the stem. Comes right out. And then just do a chop. Just like this. This is great. Still simmering. Ready, in, go. The kale. Beautiful. And this is some cheese fuel tortellini. I'm gonna cook this for about five minutes. You can cover and let this simmer. All right, I think this is done. I'm gonna turn off the heat of our pot and we're gonna plate this amazing one pot Tuscan tortellini soup. And this soup deserves the good bowls, okay? I'm just gonna say that, it deserves it. Get a big scoop. Oh yeah, we've got the color from the carrots, color from the kale, and color from the tomatoes. Mm, beautiful. Let's garnish. Pepper. A little bit of dried oregano, if you want some. Beautiful. Basil. There we go. And look at this. Holy smokes. Cannot wait to devour this soup. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Oh my lord. That is a delicious soup. Now, I'm not team soup only in the wintertime. I'm team soup all year long. You wanna come home to a nice warm hug. This is it. curry from scratch might sound intimidating, but I promise it's actually pretty easy. After trying this recipe, you may never go back to that jarred stuff. I'm gonna kick things off with my curry paste. Traditionally, this is made in a mortar and pestle, but this girl is busy, so we're gonna put everything in a food processor and it comes out just great. So we're gonna first start with some coriander stems. So get those right into the food processor. Then we're gonna use one small shallot or a half of this large one here. And I like to quarter it so it's easier to blend up in the food processor. So get that right in. And then we're gonna use four cloves of garlic. One Thai green chili. You could just take the stem right off like this. And you could cut this in half if you'd like so it's easier to blend. And then we're gonna use one inch piece of fresh ginger. Fresh is key. The traditional ingredient in this is usually galango, but it's not readily available, so ginger is the next best substitute. And the best way to peel ginger is using a spoon, because if you run your spoon right against the meat of the ginger, the peel comes right off. How cool is that? So pop that right in. Next, we want half a stalk of fresh lemongrass. I'm just gonna give this a rough chop. And we're gonna get that beautiful lemongrass right in. I'm using one fresh lime. Let's get 
that all in. So then we want to just cut this in half. You can use your hand or a little citrus squeezer and give it a good squeeze. And we have a few more remaining ingredients. We want some toasted cumin seeds and some toasted coriander seeds. Then we wanna add a pinch of white pepper. This is deceiving, white pepper is quite spicy, so a pinch is more than enough. And then a pinch of kosher salt. And we're gonna whiz this up. And just keep pulsing. Okay, so I think we're good. So I'm gonna get it out into a bowl and then I'm gonna grab my veggies, tofu, and noodles for the rest of my recipe. So we've had our tofu here sitting in some paper towel. We've pressed it so you'll notice that it's a little bit drier from when you open the package. So I like small cubes because I want them to be bite-sized and able to fit on my spoon or fork. Plus, if you make them smaller, then they'll cook better and crisp up. Okay, the next step is tossing them in some cornstarch. So you just wanna lightly coat them. Great, so let's turn our skillet on. And we're gonna wanna get this to about a medium high heat. Coat the bottom with some neutral cooking oil. I'm gonna start giving them a flip. This is what you want. This is gonna be flavor packed. These are looking great. You could see the color, the crisp. So I'm gonna get them removed and then start prepping my veg. First, I'm gonna slice my onion. We're just using a medium to large yellow onion. So I'm gonna do a quick slice on each half. So our onion is done. And next we wanna do one long red chili. These actually aren't that spicy, but they're gonna add a lot of flavor and they're gonna look beautiful against the green curry. So we're just gonna give a quick slice on this, just basically thin circles. Great. And next we wanna slice a green bell pepper. This one's a big one. So cut this in half. And I just like to scoop out the center to clean it up. And then similarly, we're just going to run our knife through it like the way we did for the onion. Great. And lastly, we have some carrot. We're gonna try doing this julienne because I like it to match the onions and the peppers. Okay, and now the one pan or pot magic begins. So we're gonna take the same pan that we use to crisp up our tofu in. While that's heating up, we're gonna coat it with a little bit more of that neutral oil. And now I'm gonna add in all of my veggies. Ooh, I always love that sizzle. Mm -hmm. So we wanna saute it for about five minutes or so. And to help with the process, we're gonna add in a bit of salt. The salt is gonna help release all of the moisture in the vegetables. Now that our onions are looking a little bit translucent, it's time for our curry paste. It smells so good. We're gonna let this cook down for about three to four minutes. Once you notice that the vegetables have softened and it's browning on the bottom, it's time for our liquids. So we're gonna add in about two cups of water. And some full fat coconut milk. And now is when we add our green peas. Stir this all together. And then we wanna bring this to a slow simmer. 
So while we wait for our curry to come to a slow simmer, I wanna talk about the noodles. So I'm actually using edamame noodles, which are noodles made out of edamame beans. They're super delicious and they're a beautiful green color. Okay, so our curry is simmering. So now it's time to add our noodles. You just wanna make sure all the noodles have some moisture on them. They're all covered with the liquid. Great. Then we're gonna cover it and let it cook for about five minutes. I'm gonna clean up some of these bowls and get ready to taste. Okay, so our noodles have been simmering for about five minutes, so let's give it a check. These will look so good. Notice that all the liquid has reduced but it's still nice and saucy and the veggies are still vibrant in color. All right, let's get it plated. So beautiful. I love the way the carrots look in this because they really add that pop of color. Okay, now for our tofu. We haven't forgotten about that. So they've actually cooled off here, which is great because now they're nice and crispy. And then we're gonna add some of our garnishes. So we have some fresh lime, some fresh coriander, and we reserved some of our fresh red chili. Look at this, can you believe this was made in only one pan? I just have to give this a taste. Are you kidding me? It's like I'm walking the streets of Bangkok. It's so vibrant, it's so fragrant. You should always eat with your eyes first. And this is certainly a dish that I'm eating with my eyes first. All right, we're back this morning on Today Food. One of our favorite chefs in the world is back, the great Eric Repair, his New York City restaurant, Le Bernardine, has recently named the best restaurant in the world. Wow. By the oh, Culinary oh, Guide oh, oh. LA List. Let me say that again. It is the best restaurant <laughs> in the world. And next week, you're heading back, thank God, to Grand Cayman Island. They're going to do that again. Yes. It's so much fun, the return of the Cayman Cookout. It's a great food festival featuring some of the best chefs in the world. Mm -hmm. And in honor of our friend, Miss Shania Twain, being here, Eric's going to show us a little bit about how to make a delicious and easy vegetarian mushroom bolognese. So here we go. Uh, bonsoir, monsieur, mademoiselle. Parlez-vous français, Shania? Oui, je parle français. Ah, très, très bien. Bienvenue. Merci. Non, bienvenue. Merci. Okay, well, let's French. go back to English and cook. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's do it. I, so, <laughs> do you know what you're going uh, to there? For yeah, that really. recipe, we need to, um, to slice a shallot. Mm -hmm. So shallots are round and they're very difficult to slice if you don't split them. And then with a very sharp knife, you go like that. Mm -hmm. And then you go this way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the hard part. You yeah. see yeah. like that. And again this way. And then you slice like this. I'm so glad I do. Wow. It's just a, an easy way to dice. Do you cook wow. a lot, Shine? Oh, yes. Yeah. You see, like that. How are your knife skills? My knife skills are pretty good. Pretty good. Oh, oh yeah. You have pretty a knife. Good. Wait, wait, no, <laughs> sure. you Help yourself. <laughs> out. We, we are going. C'est trop tard. Vous avez déjà fait, donc c'est bien. Anyway, we have a lot of shallots. We are going to start to uh, cook the shallots. Oh, you're going to do it? Go for I'm it. Okay, don't cut yourself. Oh. We're going to start the uh, sweat the shallots that you have on your yeah. uh, table. And we're on a medium we heat. Yes, medium heat. We're gonna a little bit lower than a medium. And the yeah. garlic. Mm -hmm. And we're going to let it cook slowly. Wow. I would use a larger knife. That's the only uh, thing. Carson, I think you need a bit of improvement. Yes. Très bien, merci. Wow. Yeah, but it's okay. okay. Throw it in. Now, uh, say everything I know in French. It's like five words. <laughs> Random sentences. <laughs> yeah. We have some uh, bottom mushroom. Yep. Champignon de Paris in French. Oh, you're going to use the processor. Yes. Mm -hmm. We so, chef, whole mushrooms, Dude, stems, sure. and everything. Stems. <laughs> I always oh. chop everything by hand. I'm, I'm not a gadget it, person. It, it, we oh. have four minutes on the segment, so. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is good. This is very, uh, very good reason. Your mataki mushroom. Oh, the mataki. These are my favorite mushrooms. What is I love them too. Mataki. 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 They're very meaty. They're very nice. Mm. Very good flavor. So I'm going to put them very here. Good. Of course, we uh, cover, and then we're going to blend. 
Those sticks. Are Chef, different. is this is this mayaki? Is this uh, readily available, like regular market? Yes, very easy to find. Okay. okay. For a bolognese, that oh, makes my, sense. You're gonna so get a meatier that. one. It yes. smells very steaky. Oh, it does smell steaky. Yeah. Doesn't it? Yes, it does. Mm. I'm it very, is very steaky. So good. Are you pureeing or just chopping over I'm, here? So with, with the pearls, it's chopping, it's not pureeing. Oh. Because we want a bit of texture, right? Yeah. And you, you can see I have the, yeah. I'll show it to you, yeah. but I'll show it to the camera, yeah. to everybody. Oh, très bien, très bien. Then we're going to put the mushroom <laughs> on top of the shallots yes. and the garlic. Joseph, calorie in. The garlic's not in there yet. You've got okay. to do the garlic. You have to do the garlic, you know, like that. Oh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll get my Spanglish. I'll go yeah. trois yeah. mas minutos. Yeah. <laughs> That's three more minutes yeah. in French. Yeah, exactly, Spanish. and we're stirring up. Tras. So, why we're doing that? Cut. And we must we have wine. Tell me, you're putting white wine in here. So we're putting actually red wine. Oh, oh really? That has been reduced you already. Because brown. Uh, yeah, yeah. More the of a brown are going sauce. There. Okay. Uh, you want to put them here? Which they, ones? They, these ones, they, of course. They're already chopped. Yes. I just put my and garlic in there. So so far, and very like easy, that. chef. Yeah, it's I mean, very we've easy. Got garlic. We're using we've got salt. salt. Salt, Generously, two different types of mushrooms, some processed. Processed. Well, that was a lot of salt. Okay. Wine. Yes. The salt helps to release the, the water from the mushroom as well. Then the red wine mm -hmm. goes with it. Yeah, hold on a second. You, yeah, I, I, I would do that too. <laughs> it has always, well, if you remove it from the heat. No, yeah. By the way, <laughs> giddy up, Shania, giddy up. I know. I gotta, uh, well, I well I'm going to say, I have a question for you. Yes. Okay, so normally, when I'm doing a roux like this, yes. I like to get the mushrooms before I put the wine in. I like to get them almost brown, everything a bit browner. And you are absolutely right. Thank you. But you do that in 20 because minutes. Because there's more flavor. <laughs> you do it after? It's your oh, I always yeah. do it before yes. I put the wine, because mm -hmm. then all everything at the, the bottom uh -huh. just comes up. The, the wine is reduced on the side. The mushroom cook, then you add your wine. That's already reduced? OK. Yes. It's yeah. all, the wine has been reduced. This now we're going to put the tomatoes, order, the tomatoes. But I'm learning, because you are the best chef. Well, so now I have to remember this because then we're putting I'm our obviously you want, doing you want, it wrong. You want to take a little, Mine is little off. try the sauce? Gonna, we only got a little bit left. I don't know if you want to try oh. it. I won't share a fork. Is that your fork? No, friend? no, no. This is all you. <laughs> no, I know better. So, I'm and Catholic. Then, it's okay. Oh. We, we, we're going to let it cook. Chef. Did you, did you know that mm. um, my wedding song was... Was it know. still the one yes. I've run? Oh, yes, was it from that this was morning? my wedding song. Oh, oh. oh so many songs. Oh, look at that. I know. Oh. My wife's going to start to cry. Oh, oh my God, I see the picture. This for, uh, recipe, by the way, is made.com oh. slash view. That so it's so cooking. Cool. Uh, yeah. Huge oh, thanks to Chef Eric Repair. Wow. Shania oh, really. Merci beaucoup. Avec plaisir. I'm finishing the plate. Huge thanks to Shania. We have another minute. We're good. Let's keep going with the mushroom bolognese. We have our tasting table over here. Just a few minutes. Thank you. Très bien. Très bien. Look at that. Empty plate. Billy Billy. Not you don't even Mr. miss. Melvin? You don't even miss the beef, by the way. No, 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 you don't. No, you don't. It's very beautiful. meaty mushroom. Yeah, it's, oh, yeah. That yeah. it's good, that right? Okay. The chop. Delicious. I'm going to put them here for now. Shania, you really this know is what good. you're doing. Yeah. You need a cooking show. See, you're holding your own there with Chef yeah. Eric Repair, the no, most famous chef in I America. I definitely love to cook, and I'm experimenting all the time. Oh. Yeah. That's you nice, know, though. I just love it. It's one of my escapisms it's, again. You're going to go on a 49-city tour starting in Spokane, ending in the UK. Will you cook at all on the tour? I will not cook <laughs> on the tour. I'm on a very strict diet on the tour. Yeah. When yeah. I'm touring, I don't have... You know, yeah. uh, time okay. to really do all that. But well, chef, no, cooking is for when I'm at home. Yeah, and cook your meal. Looking at you, again, Shania. Great job, Shania. 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 Giddy up. Beautiful. Go get the song, Giddy Up. The album drops on the third. We're back with the third hours after this.
So if you're trying to get your family to eat some more veggies, we might have the perfect way to do it. Here's what you do. You just pile all the veggies on some cheesy flatbread. I mean, cheese is the vehicle for everything. <laughs> Today, culinary producer Katie Stylo is going to show you how it's done. Katie, this Hi, is a delicious Katie. recipe. Tell us about it. It's so easy, too. So my mom, growing up, used to always call this the veggie dump. That's the, the technical term for the it. The veggie dump. I'm kind of elevating a little bit. I'm calling it my goat cheese and um, herby <laughs> goat cheese veggie flatbread. Kind of mouth. No, but you would, do cover it with a secret sauce. A secret sauce. Okay, you're going to we'll tell, we'll tell that at the end. You will reveal all. All right, so what veggies exactly. do you decide, do so you choose? We're doing today eggplant. We're doing red onion, bell pepper, and mm -hmm. some carrots. But you can kind of use whatever you want, which is great about this. If okay. you're meal prepping for the week and you're going to the store, look at what looks best. That's okay. my That's opinion. That's a great idea. Because don't always feel like you're obligated to buy the zucchini, even if it doesn't look that great. Or ask the produce manager, hey, like, I'm not sure what's in season. What, That's what, a good what idea. What did you just get in? Okay. So you um, stick them all on a so tray. So we've got so eggplants, tray. carrots, onions, mm -hmm. red peppers. Yes. Okay. And, but before you roast it, a great tip when you're wow. roasting vegetables, we have a great article on today.com about roasting vegetables. Um, I may or may not have wrote it, so <laughs> plug there. <laughs> um, but you want to cut everything to kind of be a uniform size. So if you look in the tray, everything here will roast kind of in an even time. Oh, that's okay. smart. Exactly. So you can separate it onto two trays, or you can keep it on one, just make sure there's enough little space. We're going to add, you want to add a little bit of balsamic, yeah, balsamic vinegar. Balsamic <laughs> on it? Okay. Exactly. So, you know me. <laughs> and do you, need, do you need oil? A little bit of olive oil, too, a little salt and pepper. So the balsamic really helps to caramelize the vegetables because yeah. there's a little bit of sweetness in the vinegar, which is so great here. This is like my favorite tip. Even if you're just going to roast this? vegetables for the week, oh, that's just salt. Always so, put balsamic. I, I like a little balsamic. That's but I thing. also like how simple and lovely this so is. So simple. And you can do whichever vegetables you like, like I said. So okay. moving on to, I, to the most important part. I am so passionate Wait, about goat cheese. Me too. I, if there was a goat cheese council, I would love to be a part of it. Why? And I what think you're vice president. Yes, Goat cheese is so good. It's so good. It's like tangy. It's creamy. It's yeah. just, it's, it's underrated it's in my opinion. It's a little easier on the digestive tract. Okay. I didn't know that, but that's good to know. Okay, what's that? We're adding in some chopped parsley because I want to add some herbs to kind of brighten this up. And what's this one? And that's basil. So we can pop it in there. I love basil on it. Me too. See, you? On everything. On everything. And again, all of these components of the flatbread can be used in so many different ways throughout the week. So if you don't want to put this on a flatbread, this would be great. Like, honestly, on a crostini in the morning, like, add a little, like, soft boiled egg. Like, that oh, would be delicious. That sounds really can yummy. Can I ask a question? Should we put this in, like, not a blender, a blender. but. You could, if you feel like your cream cheese is, or cream cheese, excuse me. Goat cheese. Um, goat cheese. I'm sorry, I disgraced goat cheese like that. <laughs> you could pop it into a stand mixer with the paddle attachment, and okay. that'll help make it creamy. All right, so now we get to the flatbread. What do now you like? Now the flatbread part. So Did you buy that. these? You get in the middle, my queen. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you want to, you can use pita. Today we're using naan. Just pop it on I a grill pan. I know. love it's naan. so delicious. And what I like to do to get like those nice grill marks and kind of help it sear off, I pop a heavy skillet right ah, on top. So look just, at this. Look what she did. That was I a know. trick. Look <laughs> what? Katie it's crispy, it's, it's thin, it's okay, delicious. Okay. And they sell them in these little cute, like individual sizes too. So if you want it to make it for your kids or just like an appetizer, I think that's a great idea mm -hmm. too. Okay. So cook that off until it's grilled on okay, both so sides. You got it. Exactly. Right. And I don't know if you've noticed, I season it everything in every layer. So salt, pepper, salt, pepper. Same thing with this. And then you want to take a little garlic clove, cut it oh, in half. And rub it? And just rub it on the exposed side so that the warmth of the bread will oh, help the garlic melt add in. so uh -huh. good. Melty. Yep. Okay, so now you've rubbed it. Exactly. So toppings. Like, this is kind of where you can get wild and do your own thing. Okay. I am taking the roasted vegetables, obviously, but we have to add our goat cheese spread first. If you want to, you can omit the capers and the Casa Volcano Why olives. Why would you do that? What is this? Why well, would you do that, you're just, like, not a fan. Like, there's, like, People who don't like olives. Yes. Yeah. I don't like green olives. Oh, really? Can have you, you tried these though? Try these. Well, you just Honestly, taste they're delicious. This, taste one. You and your mind. Why do people yeah. make you taste things you don't like? <laughs> smell it. Smell it. It smells Wait, clear terrible. Clear your palate. You're going to change your mind. They're honestly, I'm not really they're a, salty, but they're good. They're delicious. Okay. I mean, if you like olives, they're good. Be great in a little martini. Mm. Yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Dry January. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so spreading our goat cheese mixture onto the flat okay. bread here. Just in a like nice thin even layer, I would do that whole bowl, but I'm gonna like restrain myself a little bit. We're okay. gonna add our caramelized veggies Yummy. here, and if you notice, like they have that little brownness on them. That's from like obviously the oven temp, mm. but also the balsamic really helps caramelize. Okay. I think you're right about balsamic. I know. I, mean, I think you're right about everything. <laughs> <laughs> not always, definitely not always. Okay, what's that? Your a little arugula. arugula. I like arugula. a little greens. It adds like a right. nice peppery bite. Sorry, I have all of my mouth. And then if you want to, a little tip, well, you can add I, some pistachios. I love pistachios mm -hmm. on everything. So mm -hmm. what's this final ingredient? Okay, this is the secret ingredient we were talking about at the beginning. Okay, Jenna has been go. talking about it I'm into all it. morning. Hot honey. Yes, queen. Keep it on your counter. Put Hot. it on everything. Okay? So just go to right. town. Look how much you're putting on. I mean, honestly. You don't mess around, no. Katie. Mm -hmm. I would honestly put a squeeze of sriracha, too, because I love a little spice. Isn't it so good? Like, the delicious, like, the herbs in the goat cheese pair mm. so nice with the caramelized veggie. really delicious? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I know. It's like my new favorite go-to snack. Keep hot honey around, and when you just even order cheese pizza, oh put God. it on there. Literally, oh yeah. Great mm -mm. tip. But Or make this delicious. Katie, <laughs> your, Katie your mom was right. This is so delicious. So, so yummy. Shout out my mom. Katie, you can, can you pack a shop shum for lunch? Yeah, <laughs> I'll get some containers. Right? I'll have the crew grab them after this. All right. You can get this recipe today.com slash food. And we'll be back right mm. after this. Make ahead Monday, let's turn the pantry staple here with two delicious bean recipes. Helping us do that, New York Times food columnist and author, co-author of Kid in the Kitchen, Melissa Clark. Good morning, Melissa. Morning. Good morning. Melissa. Good morning, guys. Good to see you. So let's start off with your garlicky, herby beans. And first and foremost, what kind of beans are we using? Ah, so you can use any kind of bean, and Ooh. that is the beauty of this recipe. Whatever dried beans you have in your house, in your pantry, use those. I have got pinto beans today, mm. and I have soaked them for a couple, you know, I just soaked them this morning. I got up early. I soaked my beans for about four hours. You can do it overnight, and um, they're going to go right in the pot, and I like to soak them in salty water. It helps mm. a little bit of salt in the soaking water, adds flavor, believe it or not. Um, and then I have you add your water. You know, what's great, you can do this with canned beans, but what's great about doing it with dried beans is that this broth, the water I just added, turns into the richest, most delicious bean broth. Yum. So it's worth it taking the time to make it by yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, another thing, add salt at the beginning of cooking. Some people say not to salt your beans till the end. I totally disagree. All right. Salt them <laughs> at the beginning and they will be so much more flavorful. Melissa, I, I always get nervous when I cook with beans because I feel like I spend all day making this recipe and then the beans aren't done. How do you know uh, when they're totally done and like delicious and creamy? Oh, that is such a good, that's, it's a great, I have a great tip for that. So um, just for the beans, so uh, just to finish, you want to add aromatics, whatever you have. I have herbs to make it herby, celery, onion, carrot, and garlic right in the pot. And then they simmer for an hour or two, depending on how. Now you know that they're done and I'm going to show you. These have been simmering. So you take up some beans in a spoon, mm -hmm. and I'm going to try to show you. You blow on them. Uh -huh. Can you guys see that? <laughs> yes. 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 When, I don't know if you can see, but when the skin starts to wrinkle, that's how you know that they're oh. done. Oh, so you don't even necessarily say just try have it. to take <laughs> wow. right. Well, you can also just try it, but then say that you're not sure, and you're like, ooh, do I want to eat a half-cooked bean? Yeah. I'm not sure. So if you blow on it, then you know you're safe, that's and awesome. then you can try huh. it, and you know that they're done. So right. that's why you can do this recipe with any beans. And then what's so great is, so you make this pot of beans, you simmer it for a bit, an hour or two. If you didn't soak your beans, by the way, you don't need to soak them. You just have to add an extra half an hour to an hour on the cooking time. Mm. And then once you have them, they're so flavorful. That broth is so delicious that you don't even need to do very much to turn them into a 
fabulous dinner on their own. Um, right now I have garlic. So my garlicky beans mm -hmm. with, um, Parmesan and some herbs on top. Yum. And what I like to do to make the beans even more garlicky because I'm a garlic head is I take a raw garlic clove right at the oh. end and, and grate it, it into the pot. Damn. That's garlic and then that central. Just gives a pop. I love it. It and gives it a pop of flavor. Very nice. Also on, right on our website, Melissa, we've got your way of taking those beans and turning them into a great taco night as well. We we really appreciate it. Look Thank at that. you. So, so good. Mm, there you so go. Good to see. All you By the way, add, uh, tortillas. I made your uh, oxtails last night. They were fantastic. <gasps> Oh, I love oxtails. I'm yeah. so glad. Perfect for this weather. All Enjoy. Right. Good to see you, Melissa. <laughs> Thank you so much. Good for to these, see you. You, you. You bet. For these recipes and more, head to today.com slash food. This morning at Today Food, not one but two fantastic winter dishes with a twist. Chef Charlize Rockwood. She is, uh, she, excuse me, Rookwood. She's known to her social media followers, though, as vegan Solicious. <laughs> yes, say that. Okay. Vegan Solicious. Well. Uh, she is also the creator and the host of the Black Vegan Cooking Show, where she prepares these wonderful plant based meals with celebrity guests. And she is here today with two of her favorite meals. Yay. You hear about a year ago. Thanks for coming back. You Thanks just for a great having guest. me. Mm -hmm. What are we making today? And what are these things? Okay, these are um, Thai eggplants. Okay. Thai eggplants. Oh. Thai eggplants and Indian aubergines. I call them aubergines. So this is a, a Thai green curry. <laughs> this is a Thai green curry, um, but we're adding some fish to it. Okay. okay. Mauritians always make a Thai, like a fish curry. So I try mm. to mimic the fish with tofu. Okay. It works. Okay. So what do we have? It's really fish. Okay. It's right. not really fish. No. It's tofu. It's fish ish. Okay. Yes. So you got to use extra firm tofu. Extra that firm. is the key. And that is extra firm. You can help me. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Do you want to stir this up? We've got some yes, corn flour and some fish seasoning. Okay. All fish seasonings actually are vegan by default. Okay. okay. And we're going to coat these little tofu bits we'll just put in it that. Okay. You can deep fry these or you can air fry them. Okay. I would air fry. Okay. Because they get really crispy, crispy okay. and firm. Okay. Just like that. Okay. okay. Next. Good job. Then we're going to move on. So okay. in this pan, we've got some oil. Mm -hmm. We've got some fenugreek. Mm -hmm. We are going to add some curry leaves, oh. some thyme. I've never seen curry leaves. Yeah. A curry is not a curry without curry leaves. Oh. What? That's so, good to know. A lot of us just pour it in pour a thing. Yeah. You yeah. taste right the difference stuff. when really? you use it with and without. So you're basically going to oh, roast this it. off so wow. you can so start good. to mm -hmm. smell all the aromas. Okay. Then we are going to add some sliced white onions. Okay. We've got some ginger paste, okay. some garlic paste. Garlic. Two minutes. Ooh, all things quick, 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 quick. Okay. There what we go. That? that is some curry paste. Okay. And we're basically going to roast this all off. I'm going super quick. It's some chopped tomatoes. So In goes yeah. the chopped tomatoes. Uh -huh. The paste probably has so much more flavor. And then when do we put the Cook down coconut Ooh. milk is oh. the key. Okay. okay. Coconut milk. Then you're going to add the eggplants that right. you've already roasted off. Okay. You're going to add the fish tofu that you've already fried. Right. Okay. You're going to pop the lid on. Okay. And you are good to go. And you make it with a little rice? You serve it with a little rice These cakes? These are idlis. They are, are rice they? cakes. Rice They're made cakes. from lentils and rice and semolina. Mm -hmm. And you steam them oh, wow. in this little pot this here. This is yummy, Chef. This is good. And then you piecemeal it all together. You can garnish mm. oh if my you God. want. We're running out of time. Mm. Oh, and wow. dessert. Okay. This is my dad's favorite. What is it? God rest his soul. Bread pudding. Mm. Mm. Jamaican staple. We now mm. have vegan creams, vegan butters. All those dairy things that you think you're going to miss out on, mm -hmm. this is you do not. Delicious. This is Thank really good. You. Oh my God. Thank so wait, you. a vegan bread pudding. There are some people who would be skeptical. Oh, uh, mm -mm. let me try. They don't need to be. Okay, Chanel. What kind of bread did you use here? Brioche is the key. Mm. Oh. Vegan brioche oh, is vegan. available, this is guys. The real deal. Oh, this is good. The real right? Deal. And you add a bit of creme anglaise or a bit of vanilla ice cream. Oh, wow. Chef. Wow. Yay. Yay. Take a nap after. You have Very nice. All the mm. seasonings and the flavorings. I mean, it brings everything to life. Wow. That's the key, right? I say it's not vegan food. It's just a great plate of food. It just happens there to be vegan. Exactly. exactly. Right? No pressure. Thank you so much for this. Thank, Thank you for having me. And I want to wish my little girl to get Emmy. better. Emmy's in bed. She's not well. Oh. No, get better, get better. What's your get name? Get better, Remy. Emmy. Emmy, get so better. better. Oh, For these oh. recipes, it's today.com. Oh, my gosh. Food. Third hour. Right? right back after this. <laughs>
Christmas, there's usually a lot of overindulging, so you may mm -hmm. want to lighten things up. Okay, so why not go vegan at times? That's, that's the name of the new cookbook from New York Times bestselling author Jessica Seinfeld, and it's chock full of recipes that are so simple and delicious, you may not miss the meat. Jessica's here. You guys have a real connection, the well, two of you. we're sort of related. related. Yeah. But we're going to be related. Right. How? Well, her cat. Our, our cats are engaged. Well, her that, cat, Javier. What? Oh, look. Oh, wait. He's on the left. Javier's oh, on wait, the left. Oh, wait. Y'all actually did an engagement photo? Well, that's wait. not Eleanor on the oh, right. Oh, but no. it looks like Eleanor. Well, no, COVID. Yeah. No, actually, Eleanor looks more like Javier. Okay, I'm but, confused. Oh, Whose Javier's cat on the left? That's my cat on the left. Okay. My cat, Javier, is marrying Eleanor. Barbara's cat. Barbara's cat. Sister's my sister's cat. cat. Yeah, they're engaged. And you know, I just want to say... Why is there a love between the two of them? They just aren't. Why not? Okay. Look at them. Okay. What do they Look have in common? Them. Javier's on the right, Eleanor's on the left. How yes. did they meet? She's even. a little rough and tumble in yeah. that picture. Yeah, she really is. <laughs> how, did now, they, how did they meet? They met online. They met online. You know what? This is not going to work Wait, but Jessica, honestly, we just we couldn't let you go without getting you a little a wedding dress for Eleanor and a little tuxedo oh, for Javier. Oh, so sweet. Okay. Oh well, this is Are a big announcement. Yeah, yes, this I, is a this big is, announcement. And if y'all want weird. a venue for the wedding, <laughs> y'all yeah. can come here. Do you do weddings? Yeah, we do pet weddings. Remember weddings so on the plaza? We've yes. never done a pet wedding. Let's do it. A cat Wait, no, wedding. We have okay. to ask you, is okay. Javier vegan? Um, no, okay. he's not okay. vegan. Okay. Um, he's <laughs> vegan at times, but we're, we're working on him. He's the hardest one in the family. All right. What, what inspired this? Is it just because people like to be vegan for a little while, but they don't want to commit? No, I think they feel like they are going to fail. Oh, and oh, oh, I oh. hate that word failure around food. I think there should be no shame yeah. associated with food. Well, that's why we like that at times. This is just yes. for when you feel like stepping it up a little. And actually, Hoda thinks you wrote this book for her because she was vegan for two days. Oh. That, it was really great. Yeah. I felt good during those yeah. two days. Well, that's so, the point. If you yeah. feel really See? great, you keep doing something. Okay, so Jessica. sloppy Joe's. I'm here jo to make it easy okay. for you. Sloppy Joe's. Sloppy Joe's. We have these for meat. dinner. Yeah. Okay. And that is also the point. Get people eating the foods they already like. Just make them vegan. Okay. okay. And so let's let's do this one really quick because okay. I think we took up a lot of time Sorry. in this segment. So well, yes. large Bobby top here. here with our red pepper. I'm gonna throw it in the food processor. Yum. Jenna, do you like to use a food um, processor? Sure. Processor? No, okay. I don't pulse love that. To, a, okay. Pulse it a couple times. So it's the same okay. size, it's easily just, topped. This look how beautiful. It is. Beautiful. It's all, it's all here. Yep. And sauteed. What do you add in there? This is onions. This. What's this in is here that. is Olive? that. Is, no oil or anything. Yeah. Olive oil, onion, garlic and our peppers that okay. we just chopped. Okay. Now we're going to put in our cauliflower. Oh, wow. cauliflower. Yeah, so did we're going to cook you, did this. Did you pulse, for, pulse that yep. in the thing too? Yeah, okay. so it's okay. all done in your food processor. We're going to cook this put for six in. minutes. Yes. And this, what kind of beans are those? These are cannellini beans, yeah. but you can use chickpeas or you can use red kidney beans. And, and then, then we're going to make adding, our sauce, but oh. let's make it over here so we okay. have something to do in okay. this segment. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, okay. This is apple cider vinegar. I didn't know you could actually cook with that. I just like swallow it kind of disgustingly. Oh, you do that. Yeah. Well, people say you're supposed to. For allergies. Know. Yeah. And Why what? don't you put the water in, Jenna? Okay. So I salt. Can do it. <laughs> Am I doing okay? You're doing great. <laughs> Wait. What was all those spices you're dumping? Yes. <laughs> now you want to talk about it. Okay. This is a little cayenne pepper, chili powder, salt, pepper. Yeah. Okay. Um, we put brown sugar, yeah. tomato oh, paste, sweet, yeah. water, apple cider vinegar. We're gonna mix with that. It. You put uh, it in here? Yeah. Do you want to mix this? Sure. They told me not to give you a knife. That was my instruction. <laughs> Did they? So. Maybe I'll take that wedding dress back. The cat wedding could be off. Let's put okay, this so over you here. Swirl it around and then yeah. you just dump and it right dump on top of that. And dump that in there. And here are is nice, this what it pretty. Looks like? That is what it looks oh, like. Beautiful. I mean, Look, it Jake is it. delicious. It's, so. It is actually delicious. I'm coming over here to And this is our bread bun is. that's um, been toasted with some olive oil in a skillet. Is that good? Yes, yeah, gorgeous. Let's okay. put some pickles on yeah. there. Is it yummy? Delicious. The pickles are the best part. Bread and butter pickles. What do you do? I don't. Not sweet. Right. Those are sweet and they're delicious. No. <laughs> okay, That's a great idea. Actually, somebody on my Instagram said put some vegan cheddar cheese on that uh -huh. and then you're good. And I thought that was a great uh -huh. idea. And here you go. Okay, now, mm. does, is, is your family into these? My family's it's on really board. Good. It's weird. Actually, my son last night, Julian, said, you don't even need to tell me anymore that things are vegan, because I think they're sick of getting surprised, because I'm like, that's vegan. <laughs> and they're like, OK. Yeah, it's spicy By the and way, delicious. It's got now, what, what are these real quick? These are, uh -huh. if you have a person in your life who's like, oh, I'm never, I will never eat vegan food, serve them these. What these are that? peanut butter bars. And they are so delicious. I made them last night. This has a graham cracker crust, look at the, crust look at last night. I made them and with a chocolate wafer crust. And this doesn't have any butter crust. or anything? 
No, it has um, coconut cream, you know peanut butter. Oh my God. Isn't that great? But how is that possible? Oh my God. I know. Mm -mm. Those are in my book, Vegan at Times. Are those that is a showstopper. That yep. is a bad, but so is this. I know, but oh. this. Mm. Anyway. I'm so happy. But we're not, we're just All right, we love eating. cats, we love vegan food, yeah. we love oh my you. God, Tune in Jessica. to our cat wedding. Yes, seriously. Details, <laughs> TBD. Oh wait, weird. you have to serve this as the cat cake. Yes, okay. Right with like a little catnip. Okay. All right, <laughs> <laughs> for these recipes, head to today.com slash food. And too? check out <laughs> Vegan mm. at Times. It is filled with recipes like this. All you have to do is Tell go to today.com slash shop. Tell me to stop. stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Good Friday morning, that major winter storm on the move and taking a toll. With millions in the danger zone this morning, it's January 19th, Friday, this is today. States of emergency, that dangerous winter weather that's led to deaths, damage, and caused this plane to skid off an icy runway, now taking aim up and down the East Coast. The morning commute, a mess. Airport delays stacking up. Al's got the forecast and the impact on your weekend plans. Breaking overnight, fire in the sky. Dramatic video showing flames and sparks shooting out of a Boeing jet in Miami. Oh my God, it's on fire. Just ahead, the emergency landing and what the airline believes was behind that frightening scene. Make or break, Nikki Haley stepping up her attacks with the New Hampshire primary just four days away. Who lost the House for us? Who lost the Senate? Who lost the White House? Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump. A live report from the campaign trail while in Washington overnight a move to avoid the next government shutdown. For now, we'll have the very latest. New twist, Scott Peterson serving a life sentence for killing his wife gets a new shot of hope. The famed Innocence Project takes his case, claiming new evidence shows he's not guilty. Could the convicted murderer be granted a new trial 20 years later? Those stories plus morning boost. There's a new reason to reach for a multivitamin each day, improving your memory. Who should take them and when should you start? We'll break it all down. And ready for kickoff. I'm hype, antsy. Football stars and fans from coast to coast gearing up for another huge weekend of playoff action. And we'll have everything you need to know ahead of the big showdowns to decide the NFL's final four today, Friday, January 19th, 2024. From NBC News, this is Today with Savannah Guthrie and Hoda Kotb. From Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, Hi there, everybody. Good morning. It's Friday. Nice to have you along with us. Yeah, good to see you. Got a lot to get to, including two alarming plane incidents making headlines. An Atlas Air Boeing plane forced to make an emergency landing in Miami overnight after an engine malfunction. It caused sparks to shoot out of the wing of that jet. Okay, and then look what happened in upstate New York. An American Airlines plane skidded off the runway. Of course, that's because of the snowy and icy conditions impacting much